Welcome to the greatest copywriting course in YouTube history. This copywriting course will go through the complete step-by-step -step roadmap that you need to go from an absolute beginner to a six-figure copywriter in less than a year. I'm your host, Matthew, and I made my first six figures online as a copywriter, so this is a course that I've wanted to make for a long time. I wanted to drop massive value. Honestly, this course should be worth $1,000 by itself, but I wanted to drop it on YouTube here because I know there are a lot of people who could use a course like this. So I'm dropping dropping it completely free. All that I would ask is you can leave a like down below and subscribe if you want to see more content from me. Also, if you want a free bonus resource that I usually charge $59 for, go to the first link in the description and you can speak to me directly. I'll send you the resource. So without further ado, let's jump into the free course. So welcome to the greatest copywriting course in YouTube history. That's a strong statement I know. But as you watch this, you're going to see exactly why I say it's the greatest copywriting course in YouTube history. The detail and the length I go into everything is insane. So I'm just going to jump right into it. Here's what this course covers. Number one, understanding where you are now and how to change it forever. So I'm going to show you how I went from zero to a millionaire in my early 20s. Number two, why copywriting is the most valuable skill on earth, even with AI. Number three, how you can write 100k a month copy using four fundamentals of copywriting. This is 35 minutes of value by itself. Number four, the writing strategies. This is a bonus 30 minutes of value. I wanted to add this in because I had already made this full course and then I said, you know what, I'm going to throw in an extra 30 minutes of value because the people out there like yourself deserve it. There's no point in me holding this information back. I just want to give it to you. So number five is all about how to take your new skill and high, get high paid clients with it. You'll make more money than your parents combined if you take this skill and actually implement it. So it's very important that you know how to do this because that's why you're here. You're here to make money. Before we start, I'm not here to waste my time on pointless bullshit. And you could certainly be doing other things. You could click off this video at any point and watch something else that's more interesting. But I want you to take this seriously. So this course will only cover the most important stuff that will turn you into a young millionaire with copywriting. I'm going to cover one or two very important things right now to make sure that you don't fail this course and remain a brokey. So you are one of two types of people. These are the two types of people that come in contact with information. So literally right now, as you watch this video, you will be watching it and someone else will be watching it somewhere across the world. Right now, as you're watching this video right now, someone else is also watching it. One of those people is going to become a success because of the information they come across here. And one of the people is going to become a failure. So you have to decide which one you're going to become. If we have a quick look at this diagram, you can see that there are only two variables before success or failure. So we have the information, which is clearly remains the same on both. And then we have the person. One person has their brain in their head. The other one hasn't. So what I wanted to demonstrate with the, the people here in the diagram is that one person is going to come in contact with this information. And how is it that one person can have success with the same information? Well, it's because they use their mind. They actually implemented what they were taught. They took notes. They didn't click off the video after 15 minutes because they were bored. Because this isn't going to be as entertaining as a music video or a Nelk Boys vlog. This is here to make you money. I spent hours and hours making this. I literally spent over a week fully dedicated to this video to make it as valuable as possible so I can help you become a millionaire with copywriting because I think it is such a valuable skill. I think there are so many people out there who are like me, who started out completely broke. Maybe they're in university. Maybe you're in a job that you hate. Maybe you've got financial struggles that are really, really hurting you. And I absolutely relate to all of those because that's exactly who I was a couple of years ago. So I wanted to put this course together completely free on YouTube because I think it's a good service to the world. So there are a lot of people who are going to come across this. Most of them will fail. Some of them will succeed. And the people who succeed will be the ones that take notes and they will implement the stuff that I teach. They will comment, they will subscribe, they will learn more from me. I've got loads of videos on my channel that are completely free, all for you just to consume. So I have to decide which one are you going to be today? That's all I'm going to say here in this quick introduction. I want to jump right in and actually talk about, you know, the next section. So we're going to move on to the next section, but I really, really want you to think about this. Which person are you going to be today? All right. 
I'll see you in the course. Okay, so this part of the course is all about understanding where you are now and how to change it. So I'm gonna talk about where I was and how I've gotten to the position that I'm in, explain all of the good parts and bad parts and all of the things that you need to do. This is about mindset and this is literally the most important part of the course. This is the most important part of anything you will ever learn online. I, I'm not even saying that to like, I have no reason to say that as in to like bullshit about it. Like this is literally the most important part because if you don't get the mindset right, right, you, you won't make any business work. I've handed things to people. So I've hired people before who I thought would do a good job and I've handed them control over my operation or some section of my business. And because their mindset was terrible, I literally saw the business decline like so quickly, so obviously, or whatever section they were doing, say they were in sales, sales would be up here and then I give it to somebody with a shit mindset or who's terrible at what they do and it goes down here very quickly because it reflects your performance in business. Your business is just a reflection of you and what you do and what the other people in your business do. So if you have people with terrible minds sets in it you are going to fail and this is the most important part I, I if you watch nothing else in this course watch this part because it's so important so i just want to literally make this very clear from the start if you if you set up the right mindset from now you will have a vastly different trajectory in your life. Your success rate will vary so much depending on how much you improve your mindset. So if you stay in all your old bad habits and you don't change these things that I'm gonna talk about, then you're gonna end up like broke still and terrible life. It's it's awful, I swear to God. So this, this example is perfect. Um, a small change in direction adds up. In the beginning, the difference looks small. So if we had a plane, and we changed the difference by 3.5 degrees in the very, very start. Instead of it going to Washington DC, it's gonna end up in New York City, completely different. And this is the exact same for your mindset. If you set the wrong mindset from the start, you're fucked. You, know, you literally can't set, this is the most important, and like this should be the most exciting time in the world for you whenever it comes to running businesses because you have everything out in front of you and all you need to know that is, is if I follow the right stuff now, I know that in like five, 10 years, I'll be successful because the way I look at business now, I still am very, very early in my career. I've only been in business for like three, four years, which has felt like a long time, but in reality, it's like nothing. People work for 30, 40, 50 years. And so the fact that I know all of the stuff I know now is very exciting to me because I have 40 or 50 years where I know I can put out some really good stuff. I know I can make a lot of money over the next 40 years because I just know all this stuff. So I'm gonna stop rambling. So here's me before. I wanna just show a before and after of what I was like before I really fixed my mindset. So I'm gonna make myself smaller. So I was absolutely skinned 24 seven, right? So this is me from like, I would say like the age of 15, 16, whenever you just start becoming like an adult and until the age of like 21 before, whenever I actually started working an online business. So I was just skint all the time. I had to work, my first job was like um, literally, I, well I worked in like my dad's like literal small business for a couple of years whenever I was like 10. But my first proper job was working on a building site for, I'm not even joking, three pounds 30 per hour. So working on a building site, doing all of the absolute worst jobs as like a laborer, it's called serving your time. And I did that, it was awful. Then I also worked in bars, restaurants, shops, like any basic job, you've probably had them yourself they're terrible. And the reasons they're terrible is it's stuff you don't want to do. You don't get paid. Like you literally get paid nothing. You're, you're, you're thinking like a job that gets paid like eight or 10 pounds an hour is way better than a job that pays five, six pounds an hour. When in reality, they're both terrible. You should not be making that much money. It's, it's, your your life will never ever change by making an extra couple of pounds an hour. You have to change your mindset. You have to start thinking in thousands, in hundreds of thousands, in millions. That's how you're literally gonna change. And that sounds dramatic, but get there first and then tell me it's dramatic. So I was absolutely skinned all the time, literally terrible. Um, I was also afraid of being myself and I was afraid of other people's opinions. My entire life was shaped around people who were in my environment. Because like you're, 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 if you're like me, you grew up in like literally a normal life. I never grew up around like rich people or like anything successful or anything like that. Just like normal people. Uh, most people are pretty miserable because they're afraid to take chances in life. They're afraid to do things that are actually difficult and require self-reflection and require a lot of work and sacrifice. Most people are just too lazy 
or they just don't have the balls to do it themselves. And so they will put those insecurities onto you and make you feel like shit about trying to do something. So that absolutely affected me. I wanted to make videos, I wanted to run businesses, I wanted to travel. All these things didn't align with, they didn't align with anybody that I was surrounding myself with. And then it makes you feel very lonely and terrible because you're just like, uh, you know, if you mention to somebody that you want to do a bit of self-improvement, so you say, oh, I want to hit the gym. And if they're like a fat person, like I had a friend who I've, I've cut off now, but very toxic. Talk about going to the gym all the time. He would always go on about things. Now, whenever I started going to the gym and seeing results, I noticed he got very bitter, very jealous, like immediately. You can just pick up on little things that he says, oh, you always talk about the gym. And you're like, yeah, because I'm fucking, I want to get fit. You know what I mean? And so you're probably going to experience this in your life. You're absolutely guaranteed to experience this. If you live in like a normal upbringing like I did, just, you know, earn your way through life, you're going to experience this. So I was also frequently depressed or feeling so lost. So I was going out all the time, especially through uni. I was just drinking like four or five nights a week. And that's so depressing. Because like it's it's great fun for for a short period of time. I won't lie. Like I really really enjoyed uni. I had a great time, and I think it's super important for like social life. You need to have a social life. You don't want to just be a complete nerd on the internet who's made a load of money but they have no life. Because I've met people like that too, and the most boring people on planet Earth. So you need to have some social life. You need to have a time where you go out, you drink, you go and have some fun. No problem. But after a while. If you're like me, you're going to start feeling a bit lost. You're going to be like, why am I waking up hungover every single day of the week? Why do I feel like I'm not able to contribute anything to the world? I don't feel confident in anything because I'm not, I'm not good at anything. I'm not like spending time. It's because you're basically an alcoholic. You're basically addicted to drinking alcohol um, because, you know, it makes you feel better than sitting around and trying to do something difficult. Because I guarantee you, I've been there. I've literally been through the exact same phase you're probably in right now. And it's it's awful. So I was always depressed, feeling so lost. Like I've had times in the last couple of years, even through business, where you feel lost. You don't know what's going on. Maybe you've been through a breakup. Maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe you've just dropped out of university course that you didn't like. Or you can't really figure out what it is you want to do. And it's terrible. It's the most lonely feeling in the world. You just think... I don't know where I go next. Like, what is there in the world for me? Why am I even here? And I've been there. It's terrible. So I completely understand. And this was me before. Uh, and then drinking three pound bottles of cider in uni. That's me in like first year of uni drinking a three pound bottle of Crofters cider. Cheap, absolute shit. Um, it, it got me drunk and like I had fun and like I'm happy I had this experience, but wouldn't recommend it if you were going to go out for something to drink. So I had no clear idea how to get out of this life because you don't. Like I literally just met one guy in uni who was making money online. That sparked the idea in my head. I started looking it up myself. And then I went down this rabbit hole of like, how do I make money online? And she started doing businesses, started making money. So that was me before. Skint, depressed, afraid, poor, brokey. And here's me now. So I'm a seven-figure CEO. I'm 24. And... Yeah, as I said, I've literally worked with some of the biggest companies in the world. Um, I'm able to literally do whatever I want, whenever I want. I have complete freedom. I can travel the world and I have the money to do it. And like, that's super braggy. And, and like, I don't usually like to do that, but I need to get it across to you. Like, this is possible. This is something you can do because it's something I've literally done a couple of years ago. It feels even cringy me saying this stuff because I don't usually say this shit, but you need to understand this because there's people watching this video, you probably watching this video right now. You're sitting looking and being like, I don't know how the fuck I can do this. Like I'm completely lost. And so I'm here to tell you, you can do it. Just literally hang in there with me. Like keep your attention span on this video. Don't look at anything else because I'm about to show you it. It's super important that you keep like, you just, stay focused here for like an hour or two that's all it is so i am also super healthy and happy you know go to, go to the gym i literally get up every morning so excited I, like i wake up like just happy because i'm like i'm getting up i get to go for a nice walk in the sunshine i get to have a nice breakfast i get to go and work on my businesses which i enjoy running and you know then i go to the gym i feel great it's it's amazing like i literally feel great i have time i'm able to afford like a personal chef now who cooks healthy food for me all the time so i never have to worry about food i pay people to clean my house i pay people to do all of the stuff i don't want to do anymore and it means i can just spend my time on fitness running my business and seeing my friends and having fun like it's amazing people but people won't believe that this is a possible lifestyle i'm telling you i'm living it and i've been the miserable guy like i have been this guy literally just a couple of years ago it's possible it sounds impossible but it's possible so 
I've no shackles at all, complete freedom. In the next month, I'm going to go travel in uh, America for a couple of months, literally just because I want to, not because I need to work, not because I need to do anything. I'm just going to do that because I want to, and it's a dream I've always had. So I also understand how money and business works. This takes a couple of years, takes a lot of practice, takes obsessing over it for a while, but it's absolutely worth it because it means you can do whatever you want. Um, I'm also a Rolex enjoyer, which this is the most braggy I'm ever going to be. So enjoy it because I'm not usually like this. Um, so Rolex enjoyer, not drinking three pound cider. As you can see there, I'm drinking fancy beer instead. So what has to change with you? So I just showed you that example of me because I'm pretty sure you can relate to the first person. Like guarantee most of you can relate to that first person because most people watching this, most of you are broke right now and you're not in the position you want to be. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching this video. So what has to change? You need to go through a fundamental paradigm shift in your brain. So what I mean by paradigm is just the fundamental ways you think about the world and you think about yourself need to change. They have to change or else nothing's ever going to change for you. The way you currently see the world is leading you to a very stale and boring life. And I'm going to talk about a few of the main ways you just start to change things in this presentation. And to give you one final example, if you think, okay, I don't need to change my mindset, or I, I can do it just fine the way I am, I just need to work on it. If that's the way you think, then take a look at anyone who's ever won the lottery. You'll see people who had working class jobs, completely normal lives, and then by sheer luck, they just won the lottery and made a lot of money straight away. And you might think, oh, that's amazing, that's what I want. Everybody like everybody ogles at that and thinks that's the best thing ever. But then you see like 90% of lottery winners go and fuck it all up. They lose the money. And it's because they didn't change their mindset. They don't know they don't understand how to be rich or how to have money. They're just living the way they used to live where they'll spend their money like literally frivolously they'll they, they don't know how to understand it and so you have to go through a couple of years like even now i have a bit of money i don't I'm, I'm so happy it's taken me a couple of years and not just overnight because if i made it overnight i probably would have blown it all i would have absolutely got into my head and who knows what happened I, I would have been miserable i think so you have to take time understand this process will take time but you can do it so the first thing you need to focus on is focus. The first thing you need to change. You're currently using social media, which means you're consuming content that has no service to you. Guarantee you this. Politics, religion, sports, current events, culture wars, these are all designed to distract you enough so that you don't build wealth. All of these things. This might sound conspiratorial, but believe it or not, you know, all of this stuff here, you spending your time on it, does that make you any more money? Does that actually improve your life? Culture wars, like stuff like transgender people or like just pronouns or all that shit. How does that actually improve your life? Just let people do whatever the fuck they want to do. You need to focus on yourself. You need to focus on improving your own life. Most people sit on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram all day and complain about bullshit and talk to each other. Oh yeah, that was terrible. Then they get their friends to agree with them and they're all still broke. It's terrible. It's the fucking worst way to live. And people do it. I used to do it. Even sports. I enjoy sports now. I still watch some sports. But I can see that like, if this is my entire focus in life, I know people, I've grown up with people who literally just do nothing else but watch football and like big Man United supporter and they don't do anything else. And those people like, they're, they're just completely distracted. They're living a life of complete distraction. It's pure escapism. That's all it is. And you can't get sucked into it. You have to literally turn off. I don't look at the news. I don't look at all this bullshit anymore. I don't wake up and go on social media because I don't care. Because it doesn't help me get to where I want. I know what I want in life. I want to be fit. I want to be rich. And I want to be having, a good, having good people around me. These things will not give me any of that. They'll actually suck time away from me getting to those things. So you must stop consuming the news and zone out of social media in general. It's fucking terrible. I'm not saying you're gonna. I'm not saying you're gonna completely detox of social media and never use it again. I guarantee that won't happen. But zone out of the the stupid, pointless shit. You should only have your friends. You should only have things that really help you on there. So you need to pick one thing and go for it 100%. If you want to make money, copywriting is the perfect way to start. It's how I started. It's how I would recommend anyone else start. Is either copywriting or like remote sales, which is the same as copywriting. And when I say that, I say choose copywriting. And if you do it, if you do choose copywriting, you must not watch a single video on SMMA. You must not watch a single video on Amazon FBA, Forex trading, or any other type of making money. 
Don't worry about all the bullshit. Don't worry about AI agencies or whatever the hot new topic is at the moment because I guarantee this is just shiny object syndrome. Shiny object syndrome is the worst trait of all beginners. It's where you hop on something, you see all the benefits, you're like, oh my God, this looks amazing and it looks easier than the other path because you're always trying to choose the path of least resistance in your mind. Like, don't lie to yourself here. That is what you're doing. So you're trying to choose that path, but it's literally going to lead you nowhere. I know one person who spent literally years on shiny object who buys one thing tries over two months goes to another thing tries over two months two 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 months on everything and then never does anything i stuck with the same thing over a long period of time and it worked the grass always looks greener on the other side it looks like you're starting copywriting today and then next week you might start smma because iman gadzi's living a big lifestyle and you saw somebody else who revealed a quick secret about it the grass looks greener on the other side but that's not the case. The grass is only greener where you water it. You have to stick to one thing. Guarantee you, if you go to something else, you will fail. You'll end up back on this video in like three months time. And you'll be like, oh, fucking wish I just stayed on copywriting because you would be making money by now. Just have patience. So, taking us through to the next one. Truth. These are just truths. Hard truths you have to face. If you don't want to face these truths, enjoy being a brokey. Enjoy living a miserable life and just not progressing because you have to understand these harsh truths about yourself and i'm not telling you these to make you feel like shit i'm telling you these because if you don't hear them and if you don't accept them you will stay where you currently are and that's you clearly don't want to be there otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video about how to be successful so you're gonna to have to change who you are your current form of who you are is not acceptable if you want to be successful if you don't care about being successful doesn't matter who you currently are do whatever you want but if you do want to be successful i guarantee your current self is going to have to change big time you have to do things that make you feel uncomfortable things that you don't want to do things that are not natural to you that you're not good at immediately that's the, that's the sign that you're actually doing something right if you think something is difficult that's the sign it's like fuck yeah this is actually something i can make a difference with and so just gonna fix my mic here in case i could be better so the decisions you've made in your life have taken you to the position you're in right now. As you're watching this video, are you rich and free yet? No. So understand that you must build yourself up to, to become a complete operator who can get shit done. You can become that operator and then whenever you're, you have free time, you can have all the fun you want. So you need to stop blaming others for where you are in life. Whether that be your family, your friends, or previous experiences, maybe you got bullied, maybe you had a bad job, maybe somebody, somebody did something to you, doesn't matter, you have to stop blaming other people. Take full personal responsibility for wh where you're currently at, and understand that whenever you make it, it'll be all yours to take credit for. If there are toxic people in your life, cut them out. I've had toxic people in my life multiple times the last couple of years. Friends, ex relationships, you know, even family where I just, I just don't see the person anymore because I'm just like, you literally just make me feel terrible. Anytime I see you, you complain or you drag me down or you hold me in a former state of self, which I don't want to be. And so it's a hard reality. And like, you may be toxic to someone else that might happen. But if you see someone toxic in your, in your life, it's going to be difficult to cut them out. That's the whole point. Uh, because if they were just a terrible person you wouldn't even be friends with them but if they're toxic they probably add something small to your life where maybe they make you laugh or they're comfortable maybe the relationship's comfortable you like them or maybe you're sort of tied to them because they're family but i guarantee they are literally holding you back from everything you want to do and you have to take you have to grow a pair of balls and literally drop them just go on and do your own thing it's going to be shitty it's going to be lonely for a while but you'll find new people. I promise you that. You have no problem finding people. There are 8 billion people in this world. If you make money, you can travel around and see all 8 billion of them and realize, hey, there's a lot of people here I can be friends with. And it doesn't have to be just this one or two people in my current reality, in my current little world, my little bubble that I'm in. You can see other people. So don't stress about that. Read Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. It's like literally one of the best books I've ever read. I'm listening to it again now whenever I go for walks because it's just amazing. You'll literally never complain about your life again and understand that you can achieve anything. It's absolutely amazing. This guy's been through the toughest life I've ever seen anyone and the achievements he's had is absolutely insane. So attention span and deep work. Most people don't even watch more than 20% of a YouTube video. A YouTube video that is simply designed to help them in every way. That's designed to provide the most amount of value to that person 
most people literally don't even watch 20% of it. I'm going to show you an example of this right now. So I'm going to exit this presentation and I'm going to go to this video here. So this is my free copywriting course, most viewed video on my channel, has like 200k views. And if we look at the retention graph, we can see that after like, yeah, after like a minute, like more than half of the people are gone, like literally less than a minute, most of the people are gone. And by the end of the video, we've got like 6% of people. So 20 minutes into this video, let's look at exactly 20 minutes. We can see that 14% of the people who clicked on this video with the hope of learning from this free copywriting course and improving their lives, 86% of them decided, nope, I want to watch a video about James Corden. Or I want to watch a video about some other bullshit that's not going to help me because they have shiny objects in them. They jump from one thing to another. They don't have focus. The fact that you're watching this point right now you actually need to give yourself a pat on the back. I will give you a little clap because I guarantee the amount of people, and I can post this somewhere on like Twitter or something after to prove it to you, guarantee the amount of people who have not watched this far in the video is insane and those people will go nowhere in life. So, attention span and deep work, very important. Learn to focus on things for extended periods of time. Start trying deep work sessions. So this is really, really simple. I do this anytime my focus gets killed. So when I go for a weekend of drinking, which is not very often, uh, but I do do it because I want to have a fun life. You know what I mean? I'm not just a completely boring person who does nothing. I go for weekends of drinking. I go out and see friends. Or I might burn out sometimes. I work too much and then I can't sit down and work. Sometimes I just do a little timer on my computer. Go to Google, type in timer, 15 minutes. It starts and then I put on some binaural beats. That's like literally music you can find on YouTube. Really, really good. And it just gets you in the zone for working. And I just focus on one simple task. So for you, that'll be very easy. Like that simple task will literally just be writing a piece of copy. So you want to write a, an email for a client that you want to work with. Write it. Send it to them in that 15 minutes. And then literally you'll look back and be like, only 15 minutes have passed. And I've already written a full a full piece of copy and sent it to somebody that could potentially pay me a grand a month to work for them. So you literally have increased your chances of getting paid a thousand dollars in 15 minutes. It's that easy, but most people are too lazy to do it. So start doing these. I started doing these multiple times a day until I just, it just became natural. Like right now, I literally spent like, I took the a whole month of like July um, as a break. After it, my focus was absolutely destroyed because it was out seeing people all the time. I had no reason to come back and like want to work, but I realized, hey, I have to work. And so I started like building my focus up and now it's just natural. I'm just in here. It's like 12 o'clock at night. I'm recording this video for you. It's like, I don't know how long this is going to be, but I have no problem doing it. It's, it's super easy because I built my thing up. You can't go from zero to a full work day in, in one day. Like it, it'll take weeks. It'll take weeks, but do these 15 minute ones. Try and get like an hour of deep work in one whole day. Whether that be spread out, if you can do it one time, you know, build that up every day for a couple of weeks. And I recommend you re read Cal Newport's Deep Work. It's a good one. Fire any of these on as an audible, like download. Put, go for a walk, put it on. It's a healthy habit. Bring some water. Look how much water I have right now. If you're watching this, you're getting absolute pure entertainment out of this course. Most other copyright and gurus are boring compared to this. Habits. Remove the obvious ones. So the, remove the bad habits. This is like literally the habits. I, I heard a good quote that a habit is a vote for the type of person you want to do. You want to be. So I have this article with a couple of great little things here. And if we go to this one, it's like a voting. Yep. Every habit is a vote for the person you want to become. And these votes accumulate over time and you become the person that you want to be. You don't need all the votes. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to get most of them. So you might have three bad days in the month when it comes to drinking your water, or going for your walks or going to the gym or working on your business. But as long as the other 27, 25 days did well, you're having a good time. So remove the bad ones. This is so obvious, like no drinking or smoking for six months. I took like a full year off alcohol. I didn't smoke any weed. I'm never really a weed smoker, but I didn't smoke any weed or drink any alcohol. I cut out video games. I used to be an awful player for like FIFA and Fortnite. And like 
yeah, just Call of Duty and stuff like that. I used to play them all the time. And then I realized, hey, this is making me a loser. I'm not actually doing anything with my life. I'm not getting smarter. I'm not getting richer. I'm not getting, you know, better shape. I'm not even like spending time with friends. And most of the time I just played it by myself and watched Joe Rogan videos or YouTube videos. It's the most like literally waste of life thing ever. Um, so you can have them back when you're rich. But until then, you're, they're just keeping you in your brokey life. If, you, if you're still playing video games and you're doing this shit, and you, you don't have the money, then I don't know what to tell you. That's the stupidest decision I've ever seen. So you need to start building the basic good habits. Go for a daily walk for like an hour and listen to the audiobooks that I recommend. I've recommended a few already. Can't Hurt Me, you know, Cal Newport's Deep Work, and there's another one, Atomic Habits, I'm going to recommend here. So download, you can also download my videos. Download this video if you want. If you don't, if you don't want to sit down and watch the two hours right now, Download the video onto like YouTube or put it in 4G. Go for a walk with this on. Then get a $10 notebook and start writing out your daily routine the night before. This is so, so helpful. So I don't like getting up in the morning and not having any direction. So every night before I go to bed, I write 9 a.m., get up and go for a walk and get your breakfast. 10 a.m., start work and, and like list out the specific tasks you want to do. Because if you don't list the specific tasks, you're not going to do them. You need to feel hungry right now. Like, like if you're if you're sitting watching this video and you don't have money or you're not in the position you want to be, I like if I were you, I'd be like literally completely restless. Like right now, there's things I want to achieve, and I'm completely restless until I get them done. It's, it allows me to work like ten hour, twelve hour days every single day and love it because I'm like I'm going towards a goal or something that I really really want. So you need to feel like that right now. If you don't feel like that, you get your shit together. You need to write down, down all the reasons that your life is shit right now and be like okay this is what i wanted to look like look how far off i am let's fucking go let's get this done also drink water while you work it's a very simple easy good habit to have and do something where you give yourself quick wins so the 15 minute deep work session is like a lifesaver for me i love it write something in that 15 minute deep work session send it off to someone and take a five minute break to walk around do not watch youtube as your reward or don't don't play playstation or go on your phone or anything like that because it's just you're just destroying all the good work that you're doing see my do not disturb is coming on now so get this book as i said atomic habits now there's more of this in my paid program i would love to share this stuff this is going to be the end of this little mindset section but you're here to make money with copywriting so let's get into that Mindset is 90% of the work whenever it comes to making money. Your brain is the supercomputer that makes you the money. This is literally all you have when it comes to running a business. No matter where you go in the world, no matter what business you're in, this will never ever change to the fundamentals of this have to be good. They cannot be fed by weed, alcohol, stupid things. Invest in this and you will literally be like your entire life will change. Guarantee you. Invest in this and your whole life will change. The difference between you and me right now without sounding like a dick, is that I learned a bunch of shit. I changed the chemistry of my brain by doing all of these things that I've literally just told you. And I was prepared to fail and face the harsh decisions like cutting people out and sacrificing some social things. Sacrificing. So like I didn't go out. I really wanted to go out. I'd come, I like worked in an office for a while as well um, for myself. I just worked in like a co-working office. And I remember I used to come out at like 12 o'clock at night after working the whole day. And I'd see people my age on a night out drinking and having fun. And I'd be like, this is terrible. I, like, what am I doing in my life? I'm sacrificing. And now those people are all working their crappy jobs that they don't want to work. And I'm able to travel the world because I spent those years focused. You will have insane amounts of focus and you'll feel so good. Like those things, even though it felt crappy at the time, I knew that I was investing in my future. And I'm so happy now that I'm at a place where, hey, I get to actually take some of the dividends of what I've done. So I'm 24 now and I still have the world at my fingers. You think whenever you're 20 or 21 that, you know, you start doing this business stuff and it's going to take you like 10, 20 years to actually feel good. No, <laughs> like I'm 24 now. I started like over three years ago and I now know all of this stuff. I know how to operate businesses and make a lot of money. And it, it literally only took me like two or three years. And like you can, you can get there a lot quicker. Like you can make money a lot quicker, but even just having that knowledge of how to make money. You can do that and like literally you can make money in the next 24 hours if you just focus on the right shit. If you watch this course, if you focus on the right shit, you know, you actually invest in yourself, you can do that, no problem. So I'm so happy I know all this shit because it just gives me complete confidence in myself that no matter what the situation is, all my money disappears, everything disappears, my entire business gets destroyed. I know I can wake up tomorrow and be like, right, I know how to make money, let's fucking get at this shit. I know I'm still young. I invested a couple of years in myself and I'm in an amazing position for the rest of my life. So 
that's pretty much it for this section. We're going to move on to the next section. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you've watched this particular section and you're still here, comment comment something funny. Let's see. What, what can we comment? Um, drink your water. Comment drink your water because I've got three water bottles. Drink your water in the comments right now. If you, if you comment that, I will see the comments and I'll go down there and like it and respond. Ha ha ha. Or something similar. Okay, so that's going to do it for this section. I'll see you in the next one. So in this section, we are going to talk about how to make money copywriting in the current landscape of AI. So AI is a tool, not a replacement. AI simply raises the bar and wipes out the shit copywriters. I'm sure you've seen videos where it's a guy and it's like, oh, is AI killing copywriting? Or you've seen some article or you've seen some absolute douchebag on Twitter and he's like, AI is going to kill it for these three reasons. Here's why. And then it literally doesn't kill it. Like people are still making money with AI. So I wouldn't worry about AI if I were you. AI should only worry people who are absolutely shit at copywriting because those people aren't going to make money anyway. If you're good enough at copywriting, it's not a comp comp competitor. Like I can tell you this from someone who's done copywriting, made a lot of money with it. Now I run a seven-figure sales business and of other seven-figure and eight-figure buddies, None of them use AI copywriters. Like it's, it's, you wouldn't even think to use it. It's just so basic and shit. So don't worry about AI. It's not something you need to stress about. There's a link in the description to go and grab two offers that are currently working right now in the, in the world of copywriting. So I'm going to put them down below. There's a link in the description. Just click it. You can get that completely free and that's going to tell you what offers are working right now in the world of copyright and it's not related to AI. But I also want to mention that content writing is not the same as copywriting, but they're very simple. Simple. Similar. Jesus Christ. All right, content writing. So like anything, there's a lot of money in content writing. If you don't know what content writing is, it's just it's similar to co copywriting, but you're just writing content like YouTube video scripts, you know, um, Instagram posts to provide value, LinkedIn posts, Facebook posts, anything that sort of provides value or entertains people but doesn't actually sell them. And then copywriting is obviously different where it's, you're, you're kind of selling people. But if you're good at copywriting, you'll be good at content writing. Copywriting sort of takes over that. <clears throat> so if you know where to look, there's a lot of money in it. The same with anything, the same with copywriting. Most people will be looking at videos that are like three or four years old and being like, Oh, can I make money doing this anymore? No, you can't. I'm telling you, things change over time. Videos you've seen on other channels, I guarantee, aren't working. Like videos from like years ago. Uh, even some of my old videos, like some of the tactics and some of the niches that worked then, they don't work anymore. So that's why I'm making content in 2023 that will do us another couple of years, another cycle. So content writing works really well for getting you in the door with high level operators and creators. And that should be your main goal right now. It shouldn't be just to make money as quickly as possible. You will make money by a product of working with these people. So your main goal should be to work with people who have money because those people can pay you money, no problem. So you need to just not act like a child here, not see the money straight away, actually focus on getting good at something and then offering value to people who have money. People like me who run businesses or other creators who have big channels and they're bringing in money. They need someone to spend it on so that they can make more money. If you can generate people more money, they will absolutely pay you no problem. So if you can write good content for people who make content online, you'll get a consistent stream of cash and learn a lot about content. So I recommend like if you got into something like YouTube, um, I'm actually going to show you those offers if you just go to the link in the description. But you can, you can literally learn how to make money with YouTube and how to make money from creators and business owners through YouTube. And that'll teach you so much about content, so much about clickbait. Copywriting will naturally teach you a bit about clickbait, but the more you actually do it while it's a live thing, the more you actually work on like working with a video creator and being like, what what should the thumbnail be? And I don't, I don't, I don't mean you have to go and start learning how to do Photoshop and make thumbnails, but you learn what's clickbait and you'll also learn how to keep people's interest during the video. So attention is now the most valuable asset in the world. It's more valuable than oil. Learn how to mine it. It's very, very important. I'm not going to dilly-dally too much on this, on this section because I just want to get back to the most important stuff. But it's important to let you know what your options are with copywriting because if you don't do these, again, a small change in direction can absolutely destroy you here. So it's very important you know what you're doing. So you can either use it like I did, which is as a stepping stone to more lucrative businesses. So I use copywriting to get me my first money, 
get me in the door. And then when I realized, hey, there's a lot more money in working with big companies on video projects. There's a lot more money in placing sales reps with companies, uh, a lot more money with working with coaches and just doing consulting for other big companies. And then obviously even having a YouTube channel and having my information business, which is having programs and stuff like that. There's more money in that than doing one-off copywriting. But you can't look at it like, oh, I should just go straight to do that then because you can't just go straight from zero, skip all the hard work and just jump into the business that has lots of money in it because you're going to get found out immediately. Like you, you won't be able to provide the value. You won't know what you're doing. So you have to step up. You have to do this gradually. It's just like fitness. You know, whenever I was like last year, I was a big fat guy. I put on weight. And like if I had tried, like I had tried to lose weight before, I just tried to change everything all at once. It never worked. And then what I started doing was, okay, as long as I go to the gym five days a week and that's literally it and do my steps, that, that'll be our start. I didn't have to eat perfectly. I didn't have to do anything. I just started doing that. Then that got me consistent. Then I was in the gym. Then I started saying, hey, why am I going to the gym if I'm eating really bad food? And then I started changing my food. And all of these things slowly built on top of each other, like one step to the next. But if you try and do all that, and people watching this will, like you literally might be sitting being like, fuck this guy, I can go and do it. Guarantee you'll fail. Guarantee you'll stay broke and you'll waste so much time because you're being an idiot. You need to build this up. So you need to do something like copywriting because it's a simple skill you can learn. It's not SMA where you have to do like 50 million different fucking things. We have to set up an agency, find a niche, you know, actually learn a skill or understand how to find good contractors for a skill and then get on sales calls, get leads, literally build an entire business by yourself. Why would you do that? Learn one skill, copywriting or remote sales, both of which I can teach you, no problem. These skills are so much better because they're a stepping stone and then you can go off and build your own business or you can work with bigger businesses or whatever it is you want to do. But copywriting, I recommend you do it as a stepping stone. Also, I'm not the, I'm not the only person in the world who does copywriting and there's other people who have succeeded going heavier into copywriting than I did. So there's people that, you know, you can, you can get really deep into it and you'll know that you'll really like it uh, after a couple of months. Like you'll know after a couple of months whether you really like it and you're really good at it because people will tell you and you'll tell yourself if you actually enjoy doing it. If you think you enjoy doing it and you want to keep doing it, then keep doing it. And the way I would recommend you, you do that is going to joint ventures or JVs with people. So that means basically you would sell an offer. So you could write like a copywriting offer for people. You could sell your own copywriting products like eBooks or newsletters or you know, courses or whatever it is, and then partner up with other people. Or you could partner with somebody who already has products. So someone might have an SMMA course, or someone might have a YouTube course, or a real estate course, or, you know, a finance course, or any products, digital products online where there's a lot of cash coming in. There's lots of people who are doing that. There are lots of people who are making money on social media. And so if you can do a joint venture where, hey, I'm going to write all the copy for you. I'll take a percentage of the sales because I'm going to write X, Y, and Z. I'm going to write the sales page. I'm going to write the emails, blah, blah, blah. You can take a percentage. And that's how you leverage your work rather than just you doing one thing. So you could do JVs or just take commissions from your clients instead of just going for a one-off fee. Now, you need to find a way, as I said, to leverage your work so that you're not just getting paid one-off fees for doing things because you'll never get rich doing that. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself here because this is not something you can do from day one. This is, again, like step three. Like your your first step is start doing one-off gigs for people because it gets you good, gets you used to making money, and then you improve at the skill, and then you can get up into this new arena. Just think of yourself, if you're thinking of football, you're currently not even on Sunday League like you're in Sunday league football, you want to get to the Premier League, you want to get to you know the Champions League, that's where all the money is. You don't just start. Like if you were if you were playing football, if you, if you don't watch football, by the way, you're going to have no fucking idea what I'm talking about. Sunday league is like the bottom, most bottom, every man tier of football. Premier League is the very top where professionals get millions a month. And so it would be stupid to assume you can just jump from Sunday league to Premier League without a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of effort. So why would you think you do that with this? It's the literal exact same. It's how business works. It's how life works. Why would you think you could get to be the president of the United States 
if you just started becoming like a, a local politician. You know what I mean? So you have to build up. You have to get good at it. You have to spend time in the arena. You have to literally obsess with making money and copywriting and getting around people, networking, learning how businesses work, learn how money works, learn how sales work. And once you do that, you'll get really, really good at it and you'll be able to literally start doing this for lots and lots of money. You'll be able to get into joint ventures, take commissions. You'll be able to call the shots a bit more because you'll have skills that actually earn it. You know what I mean? If you're not making enough money at the minute, if you're making no money at the start, the, the thing I see so often is a lot of beginners will watch these videos on YouTube and they'll watch people like, like I've no problem with Hamza, but a lot of people will watch his content and then they'll develop this big ego. There's some 15 year old kid who has no skills, no idea how to make money, not worth anything to anyone in business, but they'll think they're worth like five grand a month just because they say it or they say their affirmations. And I can guarantee you, you will immediately get fired by anybody you want to work with. I've seen people do it. People try and, you know, um, come into my business and demand big paychecks. And then I say no. Then they get an ego and say, okay, I'm going to go off and make it myself. I look six months later and they're still doing the same basic shit. They're not making any money. And I look and I'm like, you just didn't want to do the work. You wanted to be lazy. You didn't want to take the risks. And those people never, ever win. So that's going to do it for this section. Obviously, it was a little bit more rambly, but we're going to move on to the next one. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to write copy that turns you into a money printing machine. This is going to be some of the most valuable shit you ever learn about copywriting because we are going to cover four fundamentals. Now, most people on YouTube or anywhere else will talk to you about the tactics, about what's working now, but a good headline, give you specific examples of stuff that they've used that like take like three seconds of effort. I'm going to show you examples of stuff that works, but I'm going to explain the fundamental behind it because that's super important because you're here to make money. You're not here to make it for one day or two days or whatever's working now. You need to learn how to write copy that sells for years and years because once you develop the skill, you'll know how to make money. And that's exactly why you're here. Whether you want to make money for to, to buy a Lamborghini or just to put your mom into a nicer house or for whatever reason, to pay your rent. You wanna make money, you're here to make money. You need to understand the fundamentals. Too many beginners skip straight to the tactical bullshit and they don't get the valuable stuff. These are the fundamentals, you learn these, you won't have to worry about tactics because you'll just know the fundamentals. So these are four of the most important things you must understand if you wanna write good copy. And I'm gonna go through these one by one. There's literally like, I think like 34 slides in this, full to the brim with information. And I'm gonna make it entertaining. I'm gonna keep you like hooked the whole way through like a good copywriter would because you want to actually learn this shit. And so I'm not gonna make it boring. It's not gonna be boring theory. So we're gonna talk about number one, let's be clear. That's about clarity of writing. That's a very, that's actually the shortest one, but it's so important. We also have creating your vision and storytelling, which is just like, this is just like a fundamental, like if you can't do this, you're, you're screwed. Then we have curiosity and contrast, which is like, oh, they, all of these are so important. That's why they're fundamentals. Then we have don't sell products, sell results and dreams. So you're going to learn an absolute ton in this course. Like this is insane. This is one of the most important things you need to ever watch. So like the video if you haven't already, because this is super important. Like, I can't believe I'm giving you this shit for free. It's fucking insane. So let's be clear. Let's just get right into it. You must understand that in general, people are stupid. They get confused easily. They get distracted easily. And confused and distracted people don't buy. Think about on YouTube. When you click on a video, the video needs to be very appealing. It needs to have a big thumbnail that says exactly what the video is about and a title that tells you exactly what the video is about. There are entire teams and their entire like professions built around people who can get your attention. That's what the entire copywriting industry is. That's what clickbait is. Articles on Twitter, Facebook, you think you go through a news feed. It's all articles like, oh, you won't believe what this guy said about this guy. It's all designed to get your attention. So you have to be clear. Confused and distracted people will not see that stuff because they'll be confused and distracted. They'll move on to the next thing, which is clear for them. People are, whenever they're going through a news feed or an explore page or anything on social media, which is generally where most stuff is gonna happen, then their, their brains are gonna be like sludged during that time. Because I know mine is. I know when I go through social media and I'm sitting there on my phone, I'm just scrolling, I'm an idiot. I'm just like, I want to pass time on this phone. So I'm looking through this stuff. So I have to be clearly told what to do. So basically there's a lot of reasons that their stupidity will keep them from buying. 
buying something is something that you really need. There's the, the science to this. This is why I'm teaching you the fundamentals of copywriting because you have to understand how to not distract and confuse people. So this is why you must write copy in a way that's very simple to read and understand and to give very clear and very specific instructions. So you might think it's overkill or not necessary, but you'd be surprised. Something that I used to do whenever I wrote sales pages or emails or anything else is put very, very specific instructions in the product description, but exactly how to buy the product at hand. Usually it's something like, just click the big blue add to cart button to get yours now. You wouldn't think that is actually needed, but like, I swear to God, you'll see the conversion rate jump whenever you do that. I've seen conversion rates jump just by adding a single line. Click this button to get what you want. Like, it's so simple. People need to be led right to it. So you think it'd be common knowledge that clicking add to cart is how you buy something online, but again, you'd be surprised. Along with giving up specific instructions for how to get your offer, it's also important that you write in a very simple way. If your copy is difficult to understand or read and it doesn't flow naturally, people aren't going to read it. How have I laid this out to you right now as you're reading it? It's not one big wall of text. It's not one big sentence. I've spaced it out. I've taken the time to make this easy and fun to read because otherwise you won't care. And honestly, that's all I really have to say in this section. Lay out your clear instructions and write simply. So as I said, that's a very short one. Very important point though. Most people are not like they, they don't keep things simple. Whenever you go to write stuff, I'm going to probably include an exercise in this massive course. If you're watching this as a standalone video where it's just a, a copywriting course, uh, then I'll include it in my main free course where I'm going to include some things about how to do deep work and stuff like that. Um, and if you're doing any type of copywriting, if you're doing examples like practice copywriting, you need to keep all of these fundamentals in mind. Like look at your piece of copy after you're done and look through the 10 fundamentals or however many I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you four here and then I'll tell you how to get another nine after. But you need to look through them, look through your copy and be like, is it clear? Is it this? Is it this? Is it this? Because if it's not all of the fundamentals, you're not going to sell anything. So we'll skip on to the next one. Creating your vision. Now, one of the most effective ways to persuade something, someone to buy your product or service is through stories. I see people do this wrong all the time. All the time. My email inbox is filled with beginners trying to pitch me something with a boring story that only they care about. They ramble on for far too long. They talk about all the wrong stuff and they lose the reader. They lose me before any actual persuasion is even done. I'm a copywriter, right? I think. There's a video on my channel called how I closed the, the best copywriter in the world, Ben Settle. Go and watch that video and see how I closed that guy. It was not boring. It was very short, very sweet, and I, I didn't ramble. You'll see that very quickly. So they lose the reader before any actual persuasion is done, and that is exactly what we're trying to avoid. We need to keep people hooked. So if we're going to use stories, we want them to actually serve a purpose, to actually persuade people to buy what we're selling. So let's talk about how to do that. First, you've got to understand... Nobody gives a shit about 99% of the stories you're likely to tell. If you've ever been in a group setting and tried to tell a story, then got interrupted halfway through. It's not a great feeling, I know. But when that happens, it's because no one gives a shit about the story. No one really cares about anything other than themselves. So if you ever find that, like, if, you, if you've tried this, because I've definitely tried this as, you know, a business owner trying to sell and network with people, I tell stories and I like, sort of test it in my own head and then think about the next time I'm going to see someone, I'm like, all right, let's, let's not try that angle or let's not try that. Maybe I have a story that I'm telling them that's to push them in a certain direction or to persuade them of something. I kind of like A-B test it in my head. I'm like, right, uh, if I tell a story but include something that's relevant to them or if I tell a story that is completely relevant to them. So let's say I'm meeting someone who's a YouTuber. I'm not going to tell a story about like the marketing side of my business or, you know, hiring or something like that. I'm going to tell a story that's related to YouTube and think about what is this person's pain point or what is something I can relate to now as I tell the story because that's what's going to keep them interested. You know, they're not going to give a shit if it's some boring story about something they don't care about. People like they care about themselves. You've probably done this. We've listened to people and they talk about something you give no fucks about. And then you're like, why are they telling me this? You're just waiting for them to finish the, the story. Maybe you're in a bar. Maybe you're just sitting there with a pint and they're just rambling on about their fucking some bullshit. And you're just like, oh, yeah, just just make eye contact and wait for the story to finish. And then let's just get another drink. Like, that's literally how it goes. I've, I've had this. Like, I went out the weekend. It happened. People telling me stories. And I'm like, bro, this is not interesting. And I do the same thing. We're all guilty of it. But just whenever you're copywriting, you have a chance 
to tell the story via via text so you can review it after and be like, is this actually interesting? And if it's not, fucking kill it. So if you want people to actually read your stories and for your stories to actually be persuasive, there's got to be something in it for them, i.e. your reader. This doesn't necessarily mean that there's a reward in reading your story. It just means it's about something they're interested in. As I've said, it's entertaining to them or something along those lines. There's some things that are universally entertaining, but there are a lot of things that aren't universally entertaining. Like some stories, there's some stories I know when I tell the people in a bar, I know for a fact that they're going to be hooked in. Like there was one story about how I got into the VIP section of a Manchester United match. Basically what happened was I accidentally walked into a... A, like a, an exit that I thought was an exit whenever I was leaving this Manchester United match. I just had a regular ticket, like a regular normal person ticket. And I walked into the wrong exit and this woman was giving out like lanyards, like little things to put around your neck. And so I was like, all right, why are they giving us these? But we'll just take it. We just flashed our tickets, got this lanyard. And I was like, right, let's go out. I want to go out and have pints after this. So we went down, walking through this really weird exit. And then I get to the bottom of the stairs, turn left and walk into this room. And all I see is a full table of champagne orange juice like beer like literally looked around and there's like beer and people walking around serving drinks and i'm like where the fuck am i turned out i'd walked into the vip section i looked down at my lanyard and says vip match day experience i was like what the fuck every time i tell that story i and i I, there's so much more to that story that i i cut it really short there but every time i tell a story people are like how the fuck did you do that and then it just kills. So that's an example of a universal story because the reason it's interesting, as an example, the reason that's interesting is because everybody wants to get that VIP. That's a universal experience. People want to feel like they're better than other people. That's why they buy VIP. They want to get an experience that is expensive and they also don't want to pay for it. So if I tell a story that's like, here's how I accidentally got that, they're like interested because they're like, oh my God, how the fuck did you do that? Like, I'd love to do that. And I tell the story and I don't make myself sound like amazing or, or like I did some special thing. I'm just like, yeah, this is what happened. So like if, if you want to try that out, go ahead. So that's an example of a universal story. And that's just some bonus content that I haven't put in this course. But you're watching right now. You've made the best decision of your life to continue watching because most people have fucking dipped because they're going to want to go watch some boring video about fucking F1. So let's just go on through the course. Now, here's another example from a course. Just drop in, drop in value examples here. So this is from a course I took back in the day. The guy was selling weight loss supplements through email and he wrote a completely made up story about his uncle who was a gold miner during the rush, like the gold rush. Now this was a completely made up story. He wrote this out from the email list um, to sell weight loss supplements. So put yourself in this position. He brought his men to a new spot, hundreds of miles away from where everyone else was. No one thought there was any gold there, even his own men, but he had a hunch. So he went for it. For months, the man mined nothing but dirt. It was a dismal operation. At one point, there was barely enough funding to last even another week. So once his men figured this out, a huge portion of them deserted. They gave up. And the few that remained? Well, they thought that his uncle was crazy enough for mining here in the first place, let alone continuing to mine when they'd found absolutely nothing for months. So you know, they're there for months, find nothing. Everybody else is deserting. But a few thought that the uncle was crazy enough to to stay here. So, you know, his uncle was a persistent motherfucker. He continued to mine and had what was left of his men to do the same. Just a few days after the majority of men gave up and left, they struck gold. More gold than anyone had seen in their lives. My uncle became the richest man alive at the time, simply because he didn't give up in the face of adversity. Now, that was the story. Basically tied in with a metaphor about losing weight. Most people give up, but you never know how close you are to breaking through and getting your results of your dreams. You could just be a few days away, but if you give up now, you'll never know. Something along those lines. That email ended up selling more product than the previous three combined. Pretty crazy, right? I thought so. So that's just a little excerpt from an old course that I took where I found it was really, really valuable. This guy gave a great example about how to tie your story in with what you want to sell. So that's what I want to talk about. So why was that so effective? Well, he created a vision. Using the miners as a metaphor, he was able to create a captivating story. So striking gold is pretty interesting compared to most topics. That's what everybody wants. High value thing for like a low amount of work. That's the general perception. It's about overcoming adversity. And in that story, he created a vision of the incredible rewards one can expect when they don't give up. Then, he was able to tie that vision in with something that really hit home with the readers losing weight. 
the thing about storytelling is the vision is the most important part. It is. It's just the most important part. If you don't create some sort of vision in your reader's mind, the story is pointless. But when you do create a vision, your story becomes more powerful because it resonates with the reader and makes them feel things. It's all about emotion. People are built off emotion. They need to feel something. This is why I tell you stories. This is why I tell you that taking this copywriting course is actually going to change your life because if you take action on it, like if you actually do the things I'm telling you here, you will make the money. Like most people are so like, they, they don't even think about the actual real results of making money. Like whenever I first started out, I was completely broke. Like I would have killed for a literal $100 client. And then I remember I got that and the best feeling in the world I had whenever I got like a $100 client through PayPal to write copy for them. And so I want you to understand that that is actually going to happen if you take action in this stuff. You can make money. You can make a lot more than $100. I ended up making like hundreds of thousands of pounds at, at the age of 24. Like literally who does that? Nobody else I know is, is able to do that. And it's through these skills. It's through writing copy and building the business. So this is what you need to understand. This is actually achievable. You can actually change your life by becoming good at copywriting because there's a million examples of it. So once you've created a vision and made your reader feel things, all you have to do is tie that story back into the product you're selling. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is that the story alone is not enough. In order for it to be persuasive, it has to create a vision and make people feel strong emotions. Similar to what we've talked about before, this could either be a positive or negative vision. So this could either be a positive vision of the future or a negative vision. So both of these are very powerful and I'll, I'll go through some examples. The positive vision with your product or service or a negative vision of their life without it. Again, the negative one is more, more effective. So I've just shown you a positive vision, which was the, the striking goal because you overcame adversity. But, and I wanna show you another example. So a good example of a negative story or vision is the story of Patrice O'Neill's death. You might actually know Patrice O'Neill and this is a story from Ben Settle the guy I closed, and there's a video on YouTube of how I closed Ben, but he wrote this absolutely insane story about Patrice O'Neill, and I'm going to give my take on it because it's a really great example of selling a negative vision to sell the product. So, here's the story. Patrice O'Neill was a comedian, a very fat, very stubborn comedian. He didn't know, he didn't care much about his health, and he cared even less for the opinion of anyone trying to tell him how to eat, how to exercise, etc., but one day that all caught up with him. Like many obese people, Patrice suffered from type 2 diabetes. Do you know anyone in your life, just take a second out of this story, do you know anyone in your life who's really out of shape or getting out of shape? Maybe it's you. Maybe it's you or someone you know. Think about that person and then think about replace their name with Patrice O'Neill in this story and then think about how powerful this story is. I swear to God, this is because so, as, as I was reading it, I was thinking of someone fat that I know and I'm like, oh my God, this is insane. So, Back to the story. Like many obese people, Patrice suffered from type 2 diabetes. He had it all under control for the most part, until one day he didn't. One morning he woke up, and unlike every other morning before, this time he couldn't move his legs. He tried and tried and tried again, but no matter what he did, he couldn't get out of bed. He called his girlfriend, completely frantic, trying to explain to her what was happening. I'm not exactly sure what the medical term is, but basically... Patrice was paralyzed. Then the next morning he woke up again. This time he couldn't even move his arms. Slowly over the course of a couple of weeks, he lost his ability to move everything. This is from his obesity. First his legs, then his arms, then his jaw, then his mouth, until eventually he couldn't even open his own eyes. He was fully conscious, but he was trapped. Trapped inside the shell of his own body. He died shortly thereafter, but by God, if that's not a scary story. So that's why you don't want to become obese. Now, if I was fat or I had diabetes, I'd be shaking in my boots doing everything I could to make sure that that never happened to me. And that's the power of creating a vision. In this case, a negative one. So hopefully this gives you some insights into how to actually write a persuasive story. Now let's keep rolling. So let's talk about curiosity and contrast. This is a bit more tactical than some of the other principles in this section, but I'm including it for a reason. It's incredibly effective. You have to open loops in people's minds to make them want to close them at the end of your sales copy, which is why you pitch them the closed loop. So I'm just going to show you an example of someone I follow here on YouTube because I love this guy's videos. It's called James Smith. He's made loads of videos over the last couple of years. And so I want to show you his titles and thumbnails. This is a live example of what's working right now. 
to go with the fundamental to show you an example. So these are just his most popular videos. The very first one here is a recent video and it literally is absolutely killing it right now because it's relevant to what people care about. So also if you can write in a way that's relevant to whatever's happening now, people will really care because that's relevant. They're seeing that every day in front of their eyes. They're opening their phone. They're seeing that person. So if you say something that contrasts or provides curiosity about that topic that they're interested in, like in this example, Logan Paul, then they're going to watch. They're people. That's a high curiosity, like a highly, it's a highly relevant term. That's And highly relevant means they're going to care a lot more about it. So if you're telling something about Logan Paul, it's going to perform so much better than if you tell the story about the prospector. While that one might work, a story about Logan Paul is going to work because it's relevant to them now. And people people don't give a shit about old, boring stuff. So tie all this into relevant stuff that's relevant now, and I guarantee you'll perform way better. So the, the reason this video performed better, right? Basically, if you don't know anything about YouTube, 99% of the reason a video performs is by the title and thumbnail. And then as long as the content's decent and it keeps people hooked the whole time, which it does, which is an entirely other topic, as long as the title and thumbnail is good enough, you're going to you're going to get clicks and you're going to get views. And this is people, this is him selling people and clicking on this video. And this has performed insanely well. Two million views in two weeks. It's fucking nuts for a guy who doesn't get that many views. He's never got that many views in his life. He hasn't even cracked a million. So it shows you how important curiosity is. So here's why this is curious and this is why contrasting. So Logan Paul's most profitable scam yet. And it's a bottle of prime. It says scam. So... Why is this, take, take a second to think, like why, why is this making people curious about it? Well, my perception of it is, Logan Paul, most people say they don't like him. I like, there's, there's parts of him I don't like, but I also, I also am just fascinated because he's amazing at keeping your attention. He's amazing at like, he's always relevant. Like there's something about him, he's always relevant. So I would say that there's a positive perception in most people's mind about Logan Paul. Like, he wouldn't be this popular for this many years if he wasn't interesting. So most people find him interesting. They, 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 they value him quite highly when it comes to social media. And so for you to basically go against them, that's contrast. That's contrasting what most people think about someone, which is why you'll always see like the dramatic downfall of this person. Someone people generally like or something they like will get a negative review because it's clicks. People like that person. Oh, why is this person talking shit about them? I'm going to click. I'm going to find out. And then if it's bad, they'll want to comment and say their fucking opinion on it. And so that's, but you've already won. You've got them to click. So you'll never look at YouTube the same way after this video, by the way. So Logan Paul's most profitable scam yet. So that is a super title because it's very short. It's very sweet. It's clear. It lets you know exactly what he's talking about in like, like less than two seconds you see this bottle of prime oh that's cool like prime is a cool brand they've done really really well branding it how is it a scam oh my god i have to click i have to find out it's most profitable so we all know logan's done loads of stuff to make money but this is his most profitable one this is this is making me really curious i see this bottle of prime i see this guy in the background what's going on here like why is this his most profitable way to make money and why is it a scam so that makes you want to click. So that's why that video is absolutely killing it right now. Then we have V Shred fix going on Joe Rogan. So I'd say this one's probably not as contrasty, but it basically just says fake about a guy who presents himself as real. There's a, there's a bit of contrast in there. Um, this one is pure curiosity. This is really, really good. The fitness industry's dirty little secret. So dirty little secret is like, like OG copywriting term. Like everybody uses that, like the dirty little secret that'll make you 10 extra turns on your investment. You know, that sort of thing. So the fitness industry's dirty little secret. What are they hiding from you? What are they hiding from me? I'm going to click this video and find out. Like this guy makes it interesting enough for me to want to click on it. And and it's creatine worth the hype. So I've just clicked past, but you know, this is, this is making it funny. So creatine, perfectly natural supplement, but there's always a little bit of a question. Is this the nat natural? What's the, what, you know, I, whenever I got into weight lift and I didn't know what creatine was or why to use it. So a lot of people are like, there, there's a little bit of a question in your mind. Whenever there's a question about something, that's how you can capitalize on it with a story. And this is exactly what he's done here. He's lined it up as if it's, you know, you know what? I can't say it here on YouTube because it'll probably get me demonetized, but he lines it up here and he's about to snort it. And, that's how he ties in creatine, which is a big question thing, and makes you want to click a video about it. So those are some examples. 
All right, so have you ever been in a situation like this? You're in a group setting and you overhear two friends whispering your name. They're talking about you, but you don't know what they're saying. At this point, you're incredibly curious. You heard your name, but you don't know the context. You really want to figure out the context. So more likely than not, you ask them what they were talking about. The, curious, the curiosity got to this short circuit in your brain, or this loop. So you took action to figure out what's up. So you just, you know, you just ask like, oh, was my name mentioned? And you can apply this exact principle to copyright into him. Guarantee this has happened in your life before. So in fact, I see this all the time. Let's illustrate with an example. So as I just want to just want to mention, you can apply this exact principle to your copywriting. So the example is, let's say we're selling a Facebook ads course. We could say something like, discover how to use Facebook to generate leads, clients, and sales like no tomorrow. You wouldn't believe the amount of people that sell shit like this. It's fucking terrible. But what would be better is interlacing a little bit of curiosity, a secret, something they don't know. Look at this. These are examples. It's all something they don't know. They're opening the loop in your mind. So something like discover the dead simple three-step process any newbie can use to generate leads, clients, and sales like no tomorrow. The curiosity lies within the, the dead simple three-step process. You can see that very clearly here. So this section stays the same, but we've just added curiosity, which is just going to shoot the, the open rates right up. So now I've mentioned the process and my potential customer is likely dying to know what it is. What are the three stops, steps? Are they really dead simple? Will they really work for a complete newbie like me? We've got his brain swirling and tumbling, wondering what exactly this three-step process is. Even though we've communicated the same point, generating leads, clients, and sales like no tomorrow, we've done it in a way that makes the potential customer super curious about it, which will make them more likely to buy. Something that goes along with curiosity is contrast, and I've already talked about this, but contrast is basically presenting two opposing concepts together and trying them, trying them, trying to get them in the same idea. Sorry, I'm like talking for 25 minutes at this point. I, uh, I'm trying to take a little break. So contrast is a trigger for curiosity because when you put two things together that in reality have absolutely no business being together, naturally it makes people curious. And we all know what happens when you make people curious. So some more examples, selling the Facebook ads course again. So how we turned our worst performing ad into a 5X ROAS, ROAS money printing machine, or why a complete Facebook ads beginner can actually make more money in his first month than most guys with two years experience. How could that happen? The dumb as a box of rocks ad strategy that can make you $3,092 as soon as next week. I sound like an idiot here because I'm like like messing things up, but I'm, the reality is I'm just delivering absolute value to you here. And it's a lot of information. So give me a break. By combining two contrasting ideas like worst performing ad or money printing machine or complete beginner and make more money, you make people incredibly curious which again makes them more likely to buy. Just be careful not to overdo curiosity. Yes, it can be incredibly effective, but if you overdo it, it will undoubtedly lose its power. I'd recommend that you only bring out the hardcore curiosity laced bullet points when you really want to sell the hell out of something. Anywho, let's move on to the next one. So don't sell products, sell results and dreams. If you're selling a product, no one on God's green earth gives a shit about it but you. This is just a fact, especially not the people you're trying to sell it to. You know what they care about? What your product will do for them. People only care about themselves. This is where the mantra of don't sell products, sell results comes in. This is also essentially the same concept of selling features versus benefits, which is probably something you've heard about before. Don't sell the features, sell the benefits. The product being the features and the results being the benefits. So this is imp extremely important to understand. No one cares about your product. They only care about what it will do for them. No one cares about your product. They only care about what it will do for them. No one cares about your product. They will only care about what it will do for them. Hammer that into your head and never forget it. It's super important. So this means in order to sell the hell out of things with the written word, your main focus should not be on the product, but what on buying the product will result in. Take a car salesman at a Ferrari dealership. He understands this fact, which is probably why he's not selling Toyotas anymore. 
So let's take this car salesman at a Ferrari dealership. Imagine you're the rich guy who just walked in and is considering buying a new Ferrari off the showroom floor. When you walk in, the salesman doesn't talk about the 500 horsepower twin turbo V8, the plush Alcantara bucket seats, or the 3.2 second zero to 60 time. Maybe he mentions those things, but they aren't as main focus. Those are things that people will justify. They will justify the logic, but the emotion is what you sell. His main focus is creating a vision in your head of what buying this Ferrari will do for you. He talks about how beautiful girls who normally wouldn't give you the time of day will be chasing you down, begging you to give them attention, take you on dates, and put your rich guy Willie inside of them. So when they see you driving down the road in your new Ferrari, how your asshole neighborhood, how your asshole neighbor, who's always flaunting his new Porsche every chance he gets, will be in utter disbelief when you pull into the driveway. He'll be thinking, how the hell can this dickhead afford a nicer car than me? He'll take one look and be so envious his head might just pop off his neck. So do you get the gist? Once the salesman, salesman actually starts talking in terms of what the Ferrari will do for you and not about the actual Ferrari itself, you'll be more likely to buy. Yes, it's fast. Yes, it sounds amazing. And yes, it's got the looks that could kill. But all of that comes second because the main thing you care about is all the magical things owning a Ferrari will do for you, not the Ferrari itself. The salesman knows this, so that's why he focuses on selling you. He sells you the result, not the product. And because of it, you buy that bad bitch off the lot right then and there. Now, to give you an example, a real life example again of someone I know who has a Ferrari, I asked him questions like, like I'm analyzing myself when I asked him questions. I'm not asking him, like I, I guarantee, so I, I know a couple of people actually who have Ferraris and I've considered buying one. And the questions I ask people who have Ferraris aren't like, oh, what's the engine like? Or, oh, what about the tires? Or what's the interior like? And do you do this? The questions I ask is, do people actually turn their heads at you? Do you notice anything different whenever you're driving a Ferrari than when you're driving a normal car? And the answers I get are yes. They're like, yes, it's it's a head turner. People come up to me. Like, this was this is my friend. I was literally sitting asking him for like 30 minutes about his Ferrari. And I was like... Do people actually give a shit or are you just like, is it just like a normal car? Is that just like a perception that people have? But no, people actually care. Like I know when I see people out, when I see somebody with like a really nice car, like a, say a BMW i8 or for something, um, I'll look at them and I'll be like, oh, I kind of want to go up and talk to that guy because that guy has bought something that's very rare and very valuable. I need to find out what his secret is. So that is the result and the dream. People want to see that. They don't care about the actual technical stuff that comes with the car which is why when you're selling something with your copy you have to focus on the dream you cannot focus on the boring stuff too many people focus on yeah we've got these you know these documents and we'll give you this and we'll give you this and we'll give you this no sell them the dream give them all that stuff like actually deliver the value with whatever you're selling or if you're selling for a client make sure you sell for someone who can actually get results but you have to sell the dream the sales is selling the dream the product actually gets you the results so to make sure you really get this concept, here's a more common example you might be able to apply now and not later. Don't sell social media marketing. Sell more time and money. Maybe even take it a step further and sell lounging on the beach with the wife and kids while someone else makes you money. Here's a live example of someone you know very well. So on the left is some random guy who just took a screenshot from his website selling an SMMA course. On the right, we have Iman Gadzi's YouTube thumbnail. Now, I know these aren't like-for-like like examples, but it's basically a perfect example. So the guy on the left is telling you, hey, the, the only SMMA course created by real agency owners. This is how you get to 10 to 50K a month sustainably. Then on the right, we have Iman. This is how a millionaire spends his day. And the picture is him looking good, looking in good shape, out in the sun, having fun. He's smiling. What's he smiling about? I'm interested in that. The one on the right, the other picture is him with a YouTube play button. And it's like, most people would absolutely love to have that. That's a dream. And you can see that like, he's going to sell an SMMA course in his description. That's all he does. That's how he makes his money is he sell SMMA courses. But you see, he's not doing it in the boring way that this other guy's doing it. Like he's, he's literally just selling you what you want. You want to be a millionaire. This is how a millionaire spends his day. I want to be a millionaire. I'm going to watch this video. This is more interesting than this guy on the left who's talking absolute shit. Now, this video, for example, that I'm recording right now, this is not a good example of like 
how to actually sell the dream because I'm giving you a free course. But in my opinion, I want to give you the value and I'll probably create videos where I, I do vlogs and I show you my lifestyle because my lifestyle is pretty fucking cool. I'm not going to lie. I get to travel, make a lot of money, I get to do what I want, but I want to create actual value for you here because most people will sell the course and not give value. And to me, I want to give you value. So this is why I'm sitting recording. This is why I look like a guy on the left in this picture. I'm not trying to justify myself. I just want to tell you why I'm giving you value. So that's what you need to do. Here's a perfect example. Go through any of Iman Gadzi's stuff. He just sells the dream of being a millionaire, a young millionaire, and you'll see that when you analyze it. So let's recap. This is going to wrap up this section. There are four fundamentals. Number one, let's be clear. So always be clear. Be very clear about what they're getting. Number two, create your vision and storytelling. We've went over all that stuff. If you have to watch this back, watch it back. This is some of the most valuable shit you'll ever get. Curiosity and contrast, again, these are fundamentals. Like These are things you must understand. If you don't understand them, you may as well not watch this course. Like You're just going to end up broke. You're going to end up where exactly where you don't want to be. You're going to stay at the current position you are. You need to push forward. You need to make money here. These are the four fundamentals you have to take into account. Then the final one, don't sell products, sell results and dreams. We just covered that. So there are nine more secret fundamentals to copywriting that I cover in just as much detail and actually in more detail in my six-figure freelancer program. I'm not going to talk about this all day, but you must apply to, the, to join this. And the link to speak to me on Instagram along with a free little goodie is in the description. I'm not messing about. This will make or break you as a copywriter. Like there are nine. You've just seen the detail. I've been recording this video for like 35 minutes for this section. And you've seen the amount of detail I've went in with four I'm going to give you nine more. These are secret fundamentals that people just don't teach online. Most people are just terrible teachers, like I guarantee it. So if you're ready to make cold, hard cash, then let's talk. So I'm going to wrap it up here and we'll move on to the next section. Or if you're watching this video and it's a standalone video or it's in a course, enjoy it. Go and make some money. So in this section, I'm going to go over the writing strategies that will buy you a Porsche 911. Now I'm going to go into the basic copywriting structures. Then I'm going to talk about infotainment. And finally, I'm going to talk about the next line, which ties in with infotainment. So basic copywriting structure. Now that we've gotten most of the principles and tactical stuff out of the way, let's dive into two specific structures you can use as soon as, well, right now, just to start writing copy that sells. Before that, though, it's important to understand the basic structure that just about all copy takes on. There's really three key elements here. Hook body and call to action. The hook is the first part, obviously. And that's where you want to draw people in, get their attention and make them want to read the rest of your copy. For a sales letter, the hook would most likely be the headline. For an email, it's the subject line, maybe the first line or two. You get the idea. It's the first words your prospect lays eyes on. And as such, it's almost undoubtedly the most important. Because if your hook sucks, they're not going to read the rest of your copy. If they don't read the rest of your copy, they can't buy. So it's important that your hook is actually good and actually does its job of hooking people in. Next up is the body copy. The body copy is everything between the hook and the call to action. Depending on the kind of copy you're writing, what lies in the body copy will vary. Regardless, the job of the body copy is to persuade, entertain, and most importantly, get the reader down to the call to action where the money is made. So the body copy is essentially just the body of the entire thing. It's the story you're telling or it's, it's whatever you're talking about in the copy. The body is basically the copy. The headline and the call to action bookend it and basically draw attention and sell. But this is where a lot of the persuasion is actually done. This is where basically all the persuasion is actually done. Finally, we have the call to action or the CTA. The CTA is exactly what it sounds like. It's where you call your reader to take some sort of action. For our purposes, i.e. direct response, that action is usually entering their credit card information and buying your product. Every piece of copy needs a strong CTA. This is where the seal is made after all. Without it, everything else is wasted. That's the basic structure of just about every piece of copy known to man. Now let's get into two more specific structures, ADA and PASS. So A, A, I, D, A, or ADA. You may have heard about ADA before. I'm pretty sure I learned about a bit of it in school. ADA stands for attention, interest, desire, action. The purpose of the ADA formula is to take attention and turn it into action. 
Attention is the hook. It's where you get people's attention and give them a reason to keep reading. Again, people are self-interested. If you don't give them a good reason to keep reading, they probably won't. Once you have their attention, you want to make them interested in what you're saying. A good way to think about this is working backwards. What is my reader interested in? What can I say that would make them want to learn more? Obviously, this requires you to actually know the answers to these questions, so do your research. Once you've hooked them in and got them interested, how you cultivate their desire for what you're selling? You do this by talking about the key benefits of it, i.e. how it will improve their life or help them avoid something painful. I'd say this is where the bulk of the persuasion is done. As I've said, this is where you're actually getting paid as a copywriter to write this stuff. Finally, once you've got their attention, make them interested, made them desire the things that your product will do for them, you go all in for the kill with the call to action. You tell them what your offer is, you show them exactly how to get it, and maybe lace a little urgency or scarcity, a reason for them to buy today, and get them the opportunity to buy with your call to action. That's pretty much how the ADA formula works. Attention is the hook, interest and desire the body, and action is the call to action. Simple, right? I think so, and really there's no need to overcomplicate it. Copywriting isn't complex. Like anything, it just takes a lot of practice to get good at. Now let's move on to the next structure, PASS. PASS stands for Problem, Agitation, Solution. This is also called the cut and band-aid method, where you basically create a cut, you create pain, and then you sell the band-aid. You sell the thing that will solve that pain. And in my biased opinion, it's even better than ADA. It does, doesn't work for everything, but when it does, it works like hell. Here's how it works. First, you have the problem. There's a problem your reader slash prospect has that ideally is a huge problem that's constantly eating away at them. Unfortunately, not everything you sell will be a solution to a dire problem. But even when it's not, this formula can still apply. Because even though our modern 21st century world is about as comfy and, let me move my camera, and cushy as it's ever been, everyone still has problems. In reality, they're not that important. Most of these problems are not that important. You, th- you perceive them to be, but they're not. But to the person experiencing them, they may as well be the end of the world. So with PASS, you start talking about this problem. Again, in order for this to work, it has to be a problem your reader or prospect actually has. This requires research. Do that shit. Anyway, you start talking about the problem. And since it's their problem, it's something they care about, which is goes back to what I've talked about previously in this course. You have to make it something that they actually care about, get into their world. And since it's their problem, it's something they care about. It's something they're struggling with, something that really hits home with them. So when you mention it, it hooks them in. Once you have them thinking about the problem, next you agitate it. You talk about all the negative things that come with having this problem. If the problem is being fat, you talk about how hard it is to find clothes that hide your weight. How something as simple as going to the pool can become an anxiety-inducing mess, etc. I mean, I was fat last year. If, if someone had actually sold me on something that was... I don't, I don't usually buy a lot of stuff from sales pitches because I'm so advanced in the world of sales and marketing that I just don't... I just don't I'm just not as sort of easy to sell to, if you know what I mean. I'm an advanced man. But whenever I was fat, I would have bought pretty much anything that would have guaranteed to help me get there with as little work as possible. And then I changed my, my mindset... I actually put the work in and now whenever I look at buying things, I, I spend a lot of money on, on my health and nutrition now because it's really important. Like I pay for a chef, I pay for a personal trainer, I pay for a really good gym membership, I buy really, really good food, uh, any supplements or protein or anything I get, I do some research into it because it's important to me and it's something that I know if I can buy the best that I can then I'm going to be able to perform at my best and will have so many effects on my life. But most people want to just buy the quick solution. And if they want to buy the quick solution, we'll sell them the quick solution. And then they'll realize that, okay, I need to actually put the work in. So if the problem is being fat, as I said, you talk about how hard it is to find clothes that hide your weight. You you, you don't want to be wearing a t-shirt that shows your titties and your belly. That's a problem I used to have. It's not a good problem to have. I've seen so many other people have it. I have no problem talking about this because it's like, it's not like, yeah, it's a little embarrassing that, oh my God, I let myself put on a couple extra stone, but it's like, this shit happens. I'm back in the game. 
Um, but yeah, like something as simple as going to the pool becomes an anxiety inducing mess. Think about the actual problems that people have. If you're going to sell something, think about a problem that you've actually had before and then it becomes a lot easier to sell because you can write from personal experience and this will relate to people. This is obviously where you get them to feel real emotional because obviously they hate this problem. You do. And if you can solve that problem for them, you're doing a good job. So when they read about it, all those really strong nav- negative emotions come flowing in. Finally, you go in for the kill. They're super emotional, they know they have a problem, and they desperately want to find a solution. So you present one to them. Your product or service is a solution. The solution is not just their problem, but all the negative emotions that come with it. All that's left is showing them what it is and how to get it, i.e. the call to action. And that's how the pass structure works. Again, pass won't work for everything. It works best when what you're selling is more of a solution than a product. Preferably a solution to a burning problem. Regardless though, you can turn a product into a solution for just about anything. A piece of jewellery may not seem like a solution to a problem, but you can absolutely turn it into one. It can be the solution for a few problems. Things like your friend being prettier than you, cute guys not noticing you, your husband barely giving you the time of day anymore, etc, etc, etc. Everyone has problems and everyone wants a solution to their problems. And using the past structure, you can treat your product like a solution. Agitate the hell out of whatever problem it solves, and as a result, sell it like it's going out of style. There are certainly other structures for writing copy, but in general, they all follow the basic outline of hook, body, call to action. Keep that in mind when writing copy, and I have no doubt you'll be as persuasive as hell in no time. Now let's talk about infotainment. Now before we get into this section, it's a very small section, I have to give credit where it's due. Yet again, this concept comes from Ben Sattelhoof interviewed in my my channel i talked to you about how i closed them on my channel so those videos are on my channel if you want to go watch them later now i don't think he invented infotainment but he definitely popularized it and again it's this concept called infotainment you're you're writing information but you want it to be entertaining basically it's combining valuable information with the entertainment to form copy that's not only persuasive but also fun and interesting to read and genuinely enjoyable to buy from because the thing about people is We don't exactly enjoy reading. It's boring. It's time consuming. It requires focus and attention. And with so much stimulation available at our fingertips, it's becoming harder and harder for people to read. That's a problem for anyone writing copy because in order for someone to buy from you, they have to actually read your copy first. And that's where infotainment comes in. By combining valuable information, i.e. something people want with entertainment value, You make it much easier for someone to read your copy. You give them something they want and you do it in a way that's fun and interesting. This makes them much more likely to buy from you. So how exactly, sorry, just dropped my pen. How exactly do you write in an infotaining way? There's a few key things we'll go over now, but like anything, the only way to get good at it is practice. Just remember, and this goes for everything in this course, not just infotainment. I can lay all the steps out for you here, give you the blueprint, etc. But until you go and actually implement this stuff, it won't do you any good. So if you're not going to go and practice this, there's no point you watching this course. And you're deep into it now. Comment the word Saturn if you've watched this far. This is just Easter eggs. People, if people see these words, they have no idea why they're coming in. But me and you know. And I know. And I'll give you a like in your comment and I'll reply to you. While infotainment isn't necessarily the end-all be-all of writing tactics, it's pretty damn close. Yes, there are other ways to write copy, but I've yet to come across anything more effective than infotainment. So the next part of this section will cover specific ways to write in a fun and infotaining way. I'm mainly just going to go over the next line because that's so important. All right, so now we're moving into a more specific tactical writing stuff that you can directly apply to your copy to make it more persuasive. The first thing I want to cover is exactly what the goal of each line of copy is. We know that the overall goal of writing copy is getting people to buy now, not later. But when it comes to each specific line, what's the goal there? Simple. Getting the reader to the next line. And the goal of the next line? To get the reader to the next line after that. Basically, you want to write copy in a way that keeps people on their toes, like an action movie. It should hook them in, grab them by the balls, and make it near impossible for them to stop reading until they get all the way to the end. A decent heuristic for this is to look at it like each line as it is its own cliffhanger. You want people hanging on to the last word of each line, then immediately rushing in to get the next one. 
In my Six Figure Freelancer 2.0, I talk more about how to do that. In my program, I talk more about how to do that. But for now, just make sure you understand this basic concept. So that's going to wrap it up for this you know, writing strategies. As I said, there's a bunch more writing strategies that will keep your copy entertaining, which is what you needed to do. Like you absolutely need to be entertaining. The next line is just one of the strategies that I've taught to do that. I have a couple of other strategies which I teach inside my Six Figure Freelancer 2.0 program. So if you're interested, make sure to hit the link in the description. You must apply, you must speak to me directly in the DMs so I can get a feel for you know where you currently are, what your problems are, whether I can actually help you and whether it's even worth you know having you in because some people want to start copywriting and I can tell they're not serious. They don't actually care. You know, they want to make money, but they maybe don't have a good reason. They just think, oh, I just have a laptop. I may as well. You know, I've literally got that message from people. Oh, I just have a laptop and I thought I may as well try and make money. No, I want to make sure that you actually need to make this money and that you actually want to make money because we don't let people into our program who are just lazy because then it just brings down the, the value of the community. So that's where I'm going to leave this section. We're going to move on and Hopefully you find this valuable. Again, comment the word Saturn if you read this section. I will I will drop a like on that comment. So I'm gonna see you in the next one. Cheers. Okay, let's get into the cold outreach mastery section of this course. So this is easily gonna be the longest and most valuable part of this course. The most important is still the mindset, but this is the most valuable because this is what most people will not tell you about cold outreach. Now, as I said, I've generated hundreds of thousands as a copywriter and cold outreach is the first stepping stone you must learn. Once you get over cold outreach, like it's the most boring, it's actually what what literally kills most copywriters. Like most, say a say hundred people start copywriting today, 90 to 95% of them will quit because they don't want to do the cold outreach and those people remain broke. Those people never make it because they just don't want to do a little bit of difficult work. So if you put yourself in the mindset that the cold outreach is like running a marathon, the cold outreach is those initial few months where you haven't been running and you want to start running, you want to run a marathon, it is going to feel terrible. It's not fun. But this is where the actual work is done. This is where you beat everybody else. This is how you get to the point of making a lot of money and being able to travel the world, do whatever you want. So this is going to be a big section. I've recorded this course over the course of like a week and I'm currently recording it at like 10.30 at night. I'm very tired, but I'm still going to give you this value. I wanted to stay up. I wanted to get this full thing recorded because you deserve this value. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to get straight into it. So this is called Outreach Mastery, how to land clients who pay you over and over again. So here's what we're going to go through on this section. So number one is getting ready for the journey. So that's just getting you set up like what you need to have in mind. Number two is setting yourself up to win. So just making sure that you're going out there with the best possible chance of getting clients. Then is number three is choosing your niche. Number four, choosing your offer. Number five, outbound messaging mastery. Number six, sales call. And number seven, fulfillment. So all of these are pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna go into a lot of detail here. So you need to be taking notes as you go through this. Like if you haven't been taking notes already, I don't know what you're doing. You're going through like a couple of hours worth of copywriting course here. It's completely free. This is more valuable than most people's shit. And this is completely free because I'm a G and that's what I do. So let's just go through it. Part one, getting ready for the journey. So let me just adjust this. Sweet. Okay. The four biggest mistakes on the path to getting clients. Number one is letting money get in the way of opportunity. Number two is overthinking and underdoing. This is criminal. Number three, working hard but working on the wrong thing, which is something that a lot of people do because they just don't know where they're supposed to focus on. But you've got this course, I'm showing you what to do. So don't worry about that. Number four is getting discouraged or giving up, which most people in life do anyway. And that's why most people don't get to the top 1% of society, whether it be you know in fitness, in business, in relationships or anything. They can't get to the top 1% because they just don't want to do what the 1% want to do. So if you really are serious about making money and actually changing your entire life, which you should be, because what else are you going to do? You're only here once. You're going to live a completely different reality if you go forward in this life without putting the hard work in. So if you want to get discouraged and give up, then that's absolutely fine. You will live a miserable life. So number one is letting money get in the way of opportunity. If you're getting started and you're telling yourself that you want to charge your first client three grand a month, you may want to rethink your decision. So I'm telling you in this course how to get these clients that are worth one, two, three, more than 3K a month. But these aren't going to be your very first clients. 
And the people who want to jump straight into that 3K first client are idiots. They're cocky teenagers or cocky 20 year olds or cocky copywriters who think they can just skip all the hard work and go straight to the good stuff. Well, those people fall away. I've seen it over the years. The same people come in with this mindset that they can just do whatever they want and just skip through to it. And then you look at their account like six months later and it's dead. It's like four followers and like, Oh, I've decided to go in a different direction. I'm going to continue my job in the, you know, the Tesco. And like, yeah, it's because you wanted to be lazy and didn't actually want to do the work. So don't be getting in this. Don't set your expectations correct here. You have to build up. You have to do the the most difficult part of this entire journey you're going to have in copywriting in any making money online situation is the start. So you're at the most difficult part right now. If you can make it through this, you can do anything. You can absolutely do anything. So if I were you, I'd go out and buy Can't Hurt Me, the David Goggins book. I don't have a link in the description. Just go out, get it on Amazon. It's, it's like $10 or £10. Best money you'll ever spend, guaranteed. Apart from, obviously, working with me. That's, oh my God, that's like next here. So you may want to rethink your decision. As a beginner, you're still in the beta testing phase of your offer and you haven't validated your product yet. So what do you do? Many times in the beginning of my copywriting career, I had opportunities to work with clients starting with just a couple hundred dollars. I turned down most of them because I was too busy swinging for the fences, looking for those big money deals. And then once I started taking them, I realized, oh my God, these are so valuable. What I should have done was operate at my level and get those small deals out of the way before moving on to the bigger deals. My first ever client was like a hundred dollars. I had turned down other deals before because I thought, oh, I don't really want to do that. Or I'm too good for that. I want to make 10K a month straight away. And then you realize nobody does that. No matter what anyone tells you, nobody goes straight from zero to five to 10K a month. It just doesn't happen. So if people tell you that on Twitter or Instagram or YouTube, it's all designed to make you want to just start doing that straight away because that sells better. That's a better YouTube thumbnail if you go from zero to 10K in like two days. It's not gonna happen. You have to give it a couple of months. If you realistically, if you want to make your first 5K, I would give it 90 days because you have you have time then to actually work on it. Because it's gonna take you time. You're gonna have to put a lot of work in. And 90 days is a fair enough time. So that's that is an achievable goal. Now rule number one. With that in mind, the road to 10K a month is not is to actually not skip steps, but to try it, get it through all of them as quickly as possible. Get those free trials and smaller deals out of the way so that you can start working with a higher ticket crowd. You have to do them. No cutting corners here. The next one is overthinking and underdoing. Jesus, this is the worst. This is what most people do when they try and get clients. You want to do the complete opposite, which is underthink and overdo. The goal here is to take action, turn off your brain and just work. So you want to set up all your stuff at the start, which I'm going to teach you in this course. And then you want to just work like... Don't overthink every single thing you're doing. Don't overthink your offer or your niche because it hasn't worked straight away. It's not going to work straight away. But if you've picked a niche that is working for other copywriters, which is what I'm going to tell you to do, then just do it. Like literally anything else is just procrastination and you're not going to make money. There are people that message me on Instagram that messaged me three years ago and they're still struggling to get clients because they are stuck at this phase. It actually blows my mind. Like I've seen my entire life change in the last couple of years. Literally traveled the world, made hundreds of thousands, literally became a seven figure entrepreneur. And these people are still stuck at the first, the first step because they just overthink and they just don't want to do the work. It's ridiculous how lazy people can be. So don't be lazy and don't overthink. So work hard on the wrong thing. That's what a lot of people do as well. I've had to fire people in my companies for this as well because they just spend all their time working on the wrong things and they think they're busy. You know, they're, they're just a busy body. You've probably heard that before. A busy fool, someone who's doing a lot of work, but it like doesn't actually drive money into the business. And that's the whole point. So many people look for hidden tricks and strategies to get more by doing less. And again, this is a lazy mindset. Lazy people don't get the results. There's no like lazy self-made millionaires. I can guarantee you that. Um, and as I said, there's no cutting corners here. So what you should be focusing on are the fundamentals. And I've taught you a lot about the fundamentals in this course, whether it comes to copywriting or actually getting clients, uh, you're going to learn all of that. So that's what's going to get you the results is being good at the fundamentals, not the little high, like, bro, not a TikTok that you saw about how to do some special editing on short form content or some other bullshit thing that people have sold you. Those are where most people fall. 
Another thing, getting discouraged or giving up. This is why I recommend the David Goggins book. Nothing worth having is easy to get. Remember that. So like in the last year, like a year ago, I was a big fat boy. I was just like, I was running my businesses. I wasn't looking after my health. And I noticed I'd put like three or four extra stone on that I didn't need to have. I was just fat, unhealthy. It was awful. It felt terrible in every way. My confidence was ruined. Like my, my, just my shape. I just felt terrible every day because my physical health had really given up. So this year I literally had to take six months, pure monk mode, go hard in fitness. And I didn't give up like literally any day because you set these habits. Like whenever you do these things, like say it's outreach or something, you're setting habits. You need to think your brain needs to be so focused on the habits that you do like my habits are so dialed in i want to get good sleep i want to get up and get my good food in my breakfast i want to drink a lot of water i want to get go to the gym every single day and or else exercise like go for walks runs but i have to be doing these things because the habits will shape your life like the habits will literally a great quote is like um every time you take an action it's a vote for the person you want to become so if you want to be fit and you go to the gym 20 times in a month, those are 20 votes for you becoming a fit, you know, muscular man. Whereas if you don't go to the gym or if you go once or twice a month, you're only saying that like, okay, once or twice a month is that's all that's all the effort I can give to becoming this person. And it goes for literally anything. So when it comes to outreach, if you only want to send out five outreaches a day, that's fine. If they're low quality, five outreaches a day, that's how much you actually want this. Because someone who actually wanted this or actually needed to make this money online, they would be sending out a lot more than five. Or at least if they're sent in five. If you're sent in five outreaches a day, they better be the highest quality outreaches of all time. You better be writing custom videos for every client that you outreach to, or you better be writing an entire project for them and sending it to them for free. If you're gonna do five, the general rule here is that the more outreach you do, the less quality the outreach is going to be. So you can have a happy medium of you can send like lower outreaches out, but they have to be high effort. So you have to spend at least like two hours in each effort. Like if you're going to be working on outreach here, this is going to be your main thing. Like that's going to be all you have to do at the start is just outreach after you've learned the basics of copywriting and practiced and gotten good at it and spoken to other people. But if you if you have like five to ten hours a day to dedicate to this as like a full time job or however many hours you have, you need to be assigning the time to the outreach and you need to understand exactly how much time you're going to put into each outreach. So nothing worth having is easy to get. Remember that you will face rejection, ghosting and failures over and over again. Just part of the game. It's the same on Tinder. You know, like 100 people you match, you might send out 100 messages, you know, 30 reply, five dates. That's that's how it goes with Tinder. That's how it goes with sales. That's how it goes with the gym. You're going to fail over and over again. You just think of how many sports stars lose so many big games. And, you know, like think of even Cristiano Ronaldo. He doesn't win the Champions League every single year. He doesn't. He hasn't won the World Cup. All of these things, like... He fails all the time, but he succeeds a lot as well. And it's just it's just part of the game. So if you can get used to failing, you will you will succeed. That's an absolute guarantee. So when I was doing copy, I wanted to give up so many times. Like this is the worst phase at the start. But you get over this phase, this hardens you uh, as a person. Like you literally, I just I have so much more respect for people that have actually done this and gotten clients just because I'm like, you saw that through like that was the difficult part i don't even listen to beginners if beginners give me opinions on anything i don't really listen because it's just like what why why should i listen to you what have you gone through to you know portray this wisdom on to me you don't have the wisdom you have to listen to people who have actually done things that are difficult so i wanted to give up so many times but with persistence i was able to make my first 10k a month after nine months it took a lot of work but i got there it's not a sprint it's a marathon you're doing here and sorry if there's any spelling mistakes i know that i am setting a high bar here when it comes to writing copy but i've been working like literally 12 hour days every single day and there's no auto spell correct on this so i just make some mistakes now and again you're getting a good course don't worry about it part two setting yourself up to win so this is so basic right i'm actually going to go on to twitter right now on this recording uh, and just show you examples of what I think are good and what I think are bad. These are live examples that I haven't looked at already. So have a clean professional photo of yourself. Good lighting, 
nice shirt or t-shirt, well formatted bio and social profiles and a good handle. All these things are so important. You wouldn't believe the amount of people that go through copywriting courses or try and become copywriters and their profile picture is just them in a dimly lit room, terrible photo, weird face, they don't even like smile or like they don't do anything that looks half professional and then they expect people to actually work with them because that's ridiculous or they set some absolutely terrible canva logo as their profile picture because they're too afraid to actually show their face like ridiculous not going to happen these are so basic and they're the first things first impressions are so important imagine you went into a business meeting and you had a snotter hanging out of your nose and your tie was undone and you give a really shitty handshake do you think that business person is going to take you seriously no that's the first impression they have of you and it's terrible so if your first impression is terrible don't expect to get any clients don't expect to make any money if you want to be lazy on this Go ahead and do it, but you're not going to succeed. First impressions are important. Like, even imagine your Tinder photos. Are you in a dimly lit room with a selfie or a crappy logo with your name on it? Zero matches, bruv. All right, so we're going to go on Twitter right now and just literally go through my DMs just to show you how many messages I get and how many of them are terrible outreach. But there's some good ones. So, on high fam, copywriter, sales copywriter. I don't even know what this guy... I don't know any of these people, by the way. So... This is a terrible one. DM now. This is here's why this is terrible. DM now if you want to have have a guy who can write thread for your account. So that doesn't make sense. That's the most basic thing they could have. threads threads who can write threads for your account. If you spell threads right, you might get a client. Also, no profile picture. It's just a picture of art like uh, Sylvester Stallone. Don't care. Not interested. This guy actually looks like someone I would work with. Nice banner, professional. I help digital entrepreneurs go superhuman. Perfect. I'm not sure what his offer is. Like, I'm sure it's just a fitness thing for entrepreneurs. But he's a great profile picture. You see this? Good lighting. Background removed. It doesn't really matter what the background is, but you can remove it and change it to a color. It's so simple to do. Like, it takes like five minutes. But make sure the picture of you is good. You've got a nice smile. You're in a nice t-shirt. You actually look good. Your posture is correct. You're, you're sitting here like... You know, you're just not like, I'll probably find a terrible example of this and show you it. Um, but even even the bio, enhancing digital entrepreneur's performance to earn more money. That's a very simple thing about this is what I do. Here is what I do. In the first two seconds of looking at my profile, you can see exactly what I do. I help you automate your health and performance so you can focus on business. Perfect. Perfect. That's exactly what you want. That's why this guy has 7,000 followers nearly. And the other guy had like 200. Uh, Gabriel Ting, I mean, this is actually decent. Uh, how to get fit from home. That's kind of a crappy bio. Get fit for life. Grab the free doc on, in my pinned tweet to get fit from your home optimized for longevity. So it's bad English. It doesn't make sense. Uh, photos, not great, to be honest. Like, uh, he could have taken the photo with better lighting. He could have taken it with a higher quality camera. Um, it's also like down here. It should take up the whole screen. The quality of the, the photo needs to be better. So you can kind of see a trend. Like we're going to go through a couple here and you'll see anyone with a few thousand followers is going to have like this guy, 62,000 followers. All right. So this isn't a profile picture I would take, but he obviously has a large personal brand on here. So it doesn't really matter in his case, but you won't have a personal brand like this. So you can't get away with the same stuff. But as you can see, his bio is better. He's got way more stuff going on. Like he's got some followers. If you have to buy some fake followers, that's fine. But make sure you're putting out good content as well. Uh, Ruafa, um, not a great photo again, like low quality, black and white. Like, why is he, why has he got his hand here? Just literally, it's so basic. And yep, yeah, okay. I'm not even like analyzing their messages because I don't care about the messages. This is terrible. Like, why is your photo this? Put a top on. You're trying to be professional. Get a photo with a wider black background or change the background smile put a nice picture there if you don't even want to smile just at least look good i'm not even looking at this one you can see the picture here i'm not even looking at this one the profile picture is dead visual guide so this guy's obviously got a massive following so it doesn't really matter but him finley so if any of these people are watching by the way this is your critique this is one of the worst profile pictures i've ever seen it's so dark nothing against this guy it's just like Put the light on and then take the photo. It's probably a better idea than taking it in a dark room. And again, look at these, like just black and white, terrible quality, terrible quality. 
is that a picture of a cat? I'm not even looking. Most of these are just terrible. You can just tell, like, I can just tell immediately looking at these, and so can you. I'm not going to work with this guy. Picture of Bart Simpson. Why are you selling that? I'm a freelance video editor. People need freelance video editors, but they don't need it from somebody called with a Bart Simpson profile picture who can't be bothered to actually put some effort in. Like, like what is this? Look at this bio. Content writer. Space this out. Bro, space it out. Capitalize content writer. Like, it's so easy. People are so lazy. Are you looking for a video editor? Well, that's the worst introduction, introduction of all time. Photo isn't too bad, but again, put on a nice fitted shirt. Should just be a headshot of you. It's so simple. So simple. All this stuff is so basic. Again, another terrible account. I'm going to look through and like ones that stand out to me, I'll actually open. So the color is a good shout. So like these are pretty good. Like this guy. That's, it could be a much higher quality photo. It's blurry again, so I wouldn't look at that person because it's a blurry photo. I just look at this and like, this is the most basic level. Like, if you didn't even put the effort in your own profile picture, which is how the entire world sees you, why would you put the effort in with working with me? I, I immediately turned off. This guy, amazing profile photo. It's not the highest quality, but it's just a great photo. Like, solid color and he has the same color in his banner so simple pro athlete turned copywriter pro athlete tells me okay this guy actually works hard and he knows that because he's a copywriter and he seems actually decent so helping people crack the percentage code okay so i'd probably i would probably have a better bio than this would tell you exactly what you get very clearly like be super simple i've covered that in the course with copyright in any way be super clear on what you sell um this isn't the worst now it's it's not a great photo you need to again you need to have a decent headshot and that's pretty much it so like these are the kind of ones that you want to have this is a great photo this is a great photo so find any more you should have a good idea already by now but you can see any of these ones with a nice bright background and a good photo of the person first things first i just look straight at their account before i look what stands out to you in this what stands out? The ones with color, the ones who are actually putting an effort in with their profile pictures. So that's that's how you set yourself up to win. Now let's go back to the slideshow. I'm gonna take a sip of water here because as I said, it's quite late at night. I've been working 12 hours a day every day and I'm reading off this and I've got a big bright light in my face. So read along at home if you want. Learn basic spelling and grammar. If you can't even be bothered, sorry, autocorrect, to proofread your outreach, I, I'm actually going to proofread this right now. Bothered. Just to show you, I will go to the effort. To proofread your outreach, why would someone pay you $1,000 to work with him? Your outreach needs to be a live example of how persuasive you are. If you want to be a lazy little bitch and half-ass this, then you'll stay broke and complain that making money online isn't achievable or that you're missing a special something. This used to be me. I used to be the exact same person. I used to be the exact same person. Sit and complain and look at people and be like, always picking out the negative in what someone's doing. And it's just not true. You're just lazy. Like You're just lazy. Just face that fact and put the work in. When you stop being lazy, things will happen. Part three, picking a niche. So common mistakes when picking a niche are that people niche down way too deep. They go into some random specific thing that they haven't even, like, they have no idea why they're doing it. Or they choose weird industries. Or they choose overly broad niches. So they just, they just don't filter it properly. So I'm going to go into more detail. Basic principle. You want to somewhat resonate with that niche. Something that you're slightly interested in. So, like, I'm into the gym. I would work with supplement companies or personal trainers or someone who actually somewhat related to what I like doing. I'm not going to work with a beauty brand. So make sure that it's profitable and high demand and that's going to come with some market research and I'll explain more. And the prospect should actually need you. If they don't need you, there's no way you're going to sell them. The first thing is sell to people who actually need you because otherwise, what's the point? So resonating with the niche. You want to find something that you understand to at least a small degree and that you also find interesting. As I said, for example, go to the gym, I enjoy getting in shape, so I'd naturally turn to fitness as a niche. I wouldn't turn to feminine beauty product niche, not because that it's unprofitable, unprofitable, but just because I don't resonate with the niche at all. And you're gonna, this is what you're going to be doing day in, day out, so you need to actually be slightly interested in what you're selling. Otherwise, there's no point. Now, make sure it's profitable and in high demand. How do you find this? 
First, you ask on Discord communities, Reddit, Quora. Get some real feedback on the different niches fellow copywriters are using to make money. Follow a lot of copywriters. Look at what copywriters are doing and do your own research from there. Join copywriting communities. I have an amazing copywriting community as well, uh, which you can find out more about by talking to me on Instagram. Go to the link in the description, blah, blah, blah. Instead of making assumption-based decisions based on emotion, you are using real hard facts from the market here. You can get two offers that are working right now and that will work for the next couple of years by clicking on the link below and talking to me on Instagram. These are two niches I've literally recorded like in the last couple of days. Like I recorded this video and just just gave it to you. It's like use these right now. Not even, You're not even going to have to worry about this niche section if you just get that video. and It's in the description. You can just speak to me on Instagram. I'll send it directly to you. So some niches barely even use copywriters. So avoid reaching out to them. You'll find that through your research. Like some niches just just don't care you also want to make sure that the niche you pick has an abundance of ads email campaigns or a social media marketing presence so more more likely than not you're not going to be working with bricklayers and plumbers here you're going to be working with people who have online businesses people who have online businesses have lower overheads and the only overheads they do have are marketing and things that will make them more money so target people who spend money on copywriters. Don't target people who don't spend money on copywriters. And that will become fairly obvious after a small amount of time researching this. That's what your future clients will need your services for. Here are some approved niches in general, like broad niches. Financial ni- the financial niche is amazing. That's, you know, there's a lot of money moving around there. Fitness, there's so much money in fitness. It is unbelievable. Food and diets, that ties into fitness. And dating and relationships, there's a lot of money in there. People, will sp- These are the core things that people care about, like info product and education, that will basically cover all of those things. So like the reason like health, wealth, and relationships work, which is basically over, like takes over these niches, is because people will spend money on their health because it's very important to them. Like that's, that's all you have really. Then they will spend money on wealth. They want to make more money because that gives them power to do everything in life. That money is how the world goes around. That's why you're watching this video. That's why you're taking time out of your life to watch a couple of hours of copywriting content because you want to make money. And so there's a lot of money in money. There's a lot of money in writing for the money niche. And relationships because people are desperate to find love. People are desperate to do the deed with other people. So there's a lot of money in, you know, coaches and websites that like, like say it's like dating websites or, you know, literally anything that sells anything that will get people led or get people the love of their life. Part four, choosing your offer. So first off, read Alex Ramosi's hundred million dollar offers book. It's free and will literally change the entire trajectory of your life. Then go to the link in the description. As I said, if you want the niches that I can see working right now, I know I plug it a lot, but like I'm literally giving you something for free that's going to help you so much. So go and use it. It's absolutely amazing. Otherwise, do market research on the niche you're looking you're looking at and find out what they need. You can do this by literally asking people what they need help with. So ask business owners, what do you need help with? Or say, hey, can I have five seconds of your time or five minutes of your time to just ask you one or two questions? I, I, I'm not looking to sell you anything. Or better yet, ask other copywriters what their offer is and who buys it because that's just going to skip a lot of the work because these copywriters have already done the work of finding out which which niches work. Once you do that, you can't just like, you're not going to be able to make the same money as them straight away. Again, you're going to have to be good at copywriting. You're going to have to put the work in, do the outreach, get the beginner clients. But this is pretty simple. Now, part five is outbound messaging mastery. This is going to be a big section for you. So here's what to keep in mind while you're outraging. Clarity trumps everything. Lowering their sales card is important. Number three, the most pers- the more personal, the more relevant. Number four, make it low commitment for them. Number five, be concise because they value their time if they're a business owner. I can tell you as a business owner, I value my time. I do not waste any time at all with people who I don't think are worth my time, which is why setting a first impression is very important. And number six, free value opens doors, but where results will keep you in. So you have to actually be good at copywriting. You can't just skip the good at, like so many people 
try and skip the actual practice and the skill of copywriting and just go straight to outreaching because they want to make money straight away and they don't have any patience whatsoever. And then they go and get a client and then they don't deliver a result and then they think they're bad and then it's just terrible. So clarity trumps everything. Keep it short and simple. Don't try to use fancy words or sound smart. They'll only end up pushing people away. I've had to fire people for being like this. Like using fancy words, sounding smart, saying, repeating the same things over and over again. And I just, it's just the most, nobody has time for it. People value their time. Clarity trumps everything. You want to take away as much of the reader's thinking as possible. Otherwise, they won't click. So give me a second. Again, I'm going to take a drink of water because this is a long, this is a long course. Sorry, I'm just writing some stuff down. I had to write some stuff down for my plan tomorrow because I'm getting up again to make more YouTube videos for you folks. So if you're watching this by this point, by the way, comment the word Pluto. Because if you comment that, I will be so happy because I'll see that you've actually put the work in and you've been watching this far and you're watching these little parts where I'm just talking. Number whatever. Lower their sales guard. People hate being sold to, but they love going shopping with their friends. They love spending money. People love spending money. You love spending money. When people feel like they're being sold to, though, they become cautious and close up straight away. You need to get around that by what I call using sales neutral language. I might go into more detail about that soon. So the more personal, the more relevant. You want to personalize your copy as much as possible. You want to make the person, you want to let them know that you actually cared about reaching out to them and that you're not just reaching out to a thousand people with the same message. Because if you do, it turns people off. You like personal things. You like when people take the time to look at you because people like to feel special. People like to feel a connection with someone. And so if they feel like, hey, this guy just wants my money, they're going to feel crap. Like if a girl, if you text the girl on Tinder, I'm going to use Tinder as an example because it's so relevant to like so much of this like sales sort of outreach section. But if you try and get a girl in bed in the first message, what do you think is going to happen? She's not going to reply. She's probably going to unmatch you. You have to actually let them know you care about them. If that's all you're looking for, you still have to let them know you care about them because otherwise they'll just feel cheap. It's the same for your clients. So the reason many people fail to land clients is that their prospects can smell that they're part of a massive list from the get-go. You have to make it personal. So customize their first name, add a little compliment. We'll go into more outreach stuff in here. It'll show you how to do that. Make it low commitment for them. The last time invested that the pros the less time investment the prospect needs to reply or engage with you, the better. So if they can reply in a one word message to get more from you, that's great because then it just makes it as easy as possible for them to reply. If your outreach takes too much time out of their day, they will never bite. The more time commitment you create, the less likely they reply. So if you tell them, hey, let's get on a call or hey, why don't you tell me what you think about this? They don't care. They're not going to spend that time. They've got a lot of other things to do. You're pitching them. You're coming into their life. You have to give them a quick win. Give them a reason to reply to you. Now be concise because they value their time. The shorter, the better. When it comes to your messaging or whatever you decide to send out, whether it be videos, I'm going to go into more detail on that, but the shorter, the better. You want to be using the least amount of words possible. Clients who pay you two, three, four K for your services are very guarded with their time. I'm very guarded with my time. I don't hire people like every day and the people I do hire are, they just know these things. Otherwise I don't even speak to them. Like you saw how many messages I got on Twitter. I don't even look at 90% of them because I'm just like, what's the point? Like, I know you're just sending this out to a hundred thousand people. So if you send them a paragraph block of text as your outreach, they'll go to you. If you, if, if that's something you want to do and you're still watching here, you haven't already learned that, then I don't know what to tell you. Time is money, so be concise. Free value opens doors, but results will keep you in. We live in a value economy. If you can provide solid value that solves problems, that's how you can remain in a gig for extended periods of time. 
Your goal is not only to capture attention, but to display your ability to provide results on the long term. You have to show someone that you can actually help them. Not just, hey, I'm good at getting your attention, but I am not actually going to be able to deliver on what you need. Because, again, people value their time. If, you, if they end up working with you, they know that they're going, to, they're going to waste or spend time working with you, whether it be on phone calls, whether it be on you know decisions that they have to make because you're now involved like i know whenever i'm working with people the the main thing i think about is not the money the main thing i think about is the time if i spend time with this person is it going to be worth it or are they going to burn me or are they going to waste my time and give me a terrible result because that's the very first thing i care about because time is way more valuable than paying out money part 5b now we're going to get into the juicy tactics of outbound messaging so I want to talk about the Instagram bait and riz method. It's a three-step process. Step one, reply to their story asking about their products. That shows them that you're a real person. Step two, switch to your idea that you could bring them value. Don't do this terribly. Don't do a terrible segue and to be like, oh, that's interesting. Hey, have you thought about me helping you? Blah, blah, blah. Make it natural. Have a fucking actual conversation with them. So provide value through an idea without triggering the sales guard. This, this is something that you're going to get good at with practice. Step three, smoothly propose the call. Be warm and inviting. The bait and raise ta- technique works so well because there's no pitch opener, so it gets nearly 100% open rate. Once people are actually already replying, it's unlikely that they'll just ghost you because you've started a conversation, you've built a little bit of rapport with that person straight away. And this does not require a lot of skills and can be done in bulk. You can do a lot of these. How to ask for a call. A rule of thumb for proposing a call is never lead with your offer. You don't want to sell here. You want to offer value. So you want to give them something before you sell them something. Because again, they care about their time. They're not going to sit on a call. Because because whenever I think about getting on a call... There's like a 99% chance I'm not going to buy from that person because of the amount of calls I could possibly get on in a day. I could spend my entire human existence getting on sales call with people from Twitter if I wanted to. Hey, book in a call. Like literally my entire day from start to finish could just be me being sold to by people. But I don't do that because I know that most of them aren't going to be able to help me with whatever my specific problem is. Another thing you have to understand is like business owners go through specific problems at specific times and need specific people to solve those specific problems. Specific. So right now, for example, what what problems do I need solved? Uh, I could do with help with growing YouTube. I need people to help me with that, whether it be script writing, editing videos to high quality, managing my channel, show me how to grow. That's something I'm interested in. I have a second channel that I want to grow. And so if someone were coming along right now and propose like a good pitch to me about any of those things, and like they've got experience, they've done it for other people, they've done it to a high level, don't pitch me on this. If you're a beginner, I, I won't work with you. I'm just telling you that now before you waste your time. If you actually have experience growing channels and you've done it for like someone with 100k subs or something that's what i'm interested in but that just shows you like those are my problems right now if someone pitched me on that cold i would listen to it if they pitched me asking to write copy for me or some other boring thing that i don't need then i'm not going to work with them so it should always be framed like the call should always be framed in a way where a prospect can gain something from hopping on a good example is hey would you like to hop on for a 15 minute audit I'm an expert in this and I help people just like you grow. I'm not going to sell you anything. I just want to give you an audit. So see where you can improve in these three areas. Remember, people being hate being sold to but love going shopping with their friends. Now I want to talk about the Loom method. This is another simple three-step process. Step one, send a message asking if you can send them a free video. A free video with some value. Hey, I just shot a quick video for you. I wanted to see if I can send it over. It details how I can help you scale your YouTube channel with this tactic or using the same thing that I did with another person, blah, blah, blah. That's exactly the type of thing you would say in the Loom. Then send the Loom video where you ask for the call. Step three, continue and close the prospect in the DMs. Now the key principles for the Loom video is don't criticize them too much. Use a compliment sandwich. So if you're gonna say something that's in critique of what they're currently doing, Make sure you give them a couple of compliments. I know something that like someone said about Donald Trump, like how do you get Donald Trump to do something for you, do a favor, whatever it is. 
is you say, hey, you did an amazing job at that rally the other night. You really had the crowd going. And then you slip in a question. Hey, do you mind actually help me with this? Because his, his ego has been boosted. He's going to be more interested in listening to you and probably a lot easier to, to convince. So it's the same for your clients, your prospects. Number two, show them objective proof of why your improvements work. So this is where you actually have to put the effort in. This is why you have to do free trials for people. You have to do free projects at the start, put a lot of work in, do things for free for people, get them results, and then use the case study to get yourself high-paid clients. Number three, show them why you're convinced instead of trying to convince them. So I've mis miswritten that, but show them why why basically what you do works instead of just trying to convince them just so show don't tell don't criticize them too much as i said most copywriters make the mistake of ripping into a prospect sales page or email structure nobody wants to listen to themselves being critiqued nobody likes to hear bad things about themselves it pushes the prospect away you want to be nice about things and offer up solutions to improve what you see rather than bashing down on the things that they probably spent days working on show them objecting proof objective proof for example you can support your claims by contrasting results drawn from another successful company where the mentioned strategy works now their trust shifts from you to the company that has a validated sales funnel so show them an example of another company that's doing this and just say hey look i can do this for you if you give me x amount of money per month then show them why you're convinced sales is a transfer of enthusiasm so you want to show why you're convinced that your strategies are correct instead of simply promising them that they are. So you want to show them why you, why you know it because you have to put across your confidence. Why do you know that this is going to work? So this is where 99% of copywriters go wrong because they're trying to convince and put words in their prospects' mouths when instead you should let the prospect come to their own conclusion and remain in control because people like feeling like they're in control. Now, a loom structure example would be like a personal intro, personalized intro. Hey, Matthew, I was looking through your product and I thought I could help. Number two, persuasive advice and value. It came up with three ways you could improve your emails. Or I find this simple strategy that you can apply that really, really worked well with one of my previous clients. Or like this email just absolutely kills with whatever list I sent it out in. So I just wanted to send it over to you completely free here and let you test it out in your own list before you even listen to me. I'm an email copywriter and I can help you do this, but I'd rather you try something for free on the house. Then a low commitment call to action at the end. If you'd like to test this out, quick, send me a quick DM. I can shoot over the email that's going to work for you. And that's how you do it. So why the Loom method works so well is that they know you're a real person. If you're going to send them a video like this, this is what a Loom is, by the way. If you don't know, you should know what a Loom is. But it's just a video recording of your face. You can do it without your face, but you should be doing it with your face. Otherwise, people just think you're a random person. You're making them feel special and they you get a notification when they watch it so you can follow up with them like five minutes later and be like hey i just saw you watch the zoom or the loom what did you think of it blah 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 now a video intro dm so this is the best outreach method i've found so far it actually doesn't work on instagram at the moment you can't send out like they've literally just in the last week changed their policies so you can't send out a video intro so what a video intro is it's like a 60 second video with you like saying hey my name is matthew i do this x y and z or whatever you're going to do on your shield page but you just send it as a video you can't do it cold as a as a on instagram if you don't follow the person i believe so maybe use this on twitter maybe use it on linkedin facebook anywhere else just not instagram so step one is compliment them with a story reply get the conversation started if you, if you do this you can do it through instagram like if you actually have a conversation and they have replied if they haven't messaged if they haven't messaged you then you can't send them a video on instagram step two let it marinate for at least two to three days lower the sales cards so don't just sell them straight away open the conversation open the door and then a couple of days later send them something else then send them the video intro what to say in the video? This is literally a selfie video where you hold, hold your phone out at eye level. You better have good lighting. You better have the same principles as you have in your profile picture. Can't be a bad, bad video or else they're going to get a bad impression. Wear a nice t-shirt. Wear a shirt if you have to, as if you're literally just wearing a shirt all day long. Introduce who you are. Go over who you help and how you help them and ask for a quick reply back, quick, simple call to action so that you can set up a call. Now a disclaimer. Your first outreach will be your worst outreaches. You'll probably have zero game, sound bad, and not look good on camera. 
You just have to practice. You have to get better at this. The best way to fix that problem is by asking, fe- asking for feedback from your peers. And there are many copywriting communities out there where you can get very constructive feedback from your outreach strategies. I'm going to give you another free tip here. Why don't you get a little ring light from Amazon for any videos that you may record on your laptop or on your phone and even your profile picture and even a simple 10 or 20 pound ring light will drastically improve the quality of your photos and videos and you've put the effort in that most beginners won't. 10 or 20 pounds you've beat most beginners already. Now the magic lies in the follow-up. Follow-ups are like there's so much money made in follow-ups. It's insane. Follow-ups do's and don'ts. So the do's come from a different angle every time. I'm going to show you examples of all these. Make it personal, easy to read and valuable and be persistent. Also you can add some humor in here. It's very important to like keep things light. The don'ts don't send the exact same message or spam bumps. Don't send like, hey, just bumping this. Hey, just bumping this. Hey, they're just going to block you. If you look like you're putting in low effort, general rule, if you look like you're putting low effort in, people will perceive that and they don't want to work with you. If, you. if you come across as a low effort person, no one is ever going to work with you because they expect that that low effort is going to translate to the work that you do. So they're not going to pay for someone who's low effort. So just don't put it across with your, with your brand or your actual outreach don't send the same follow-up to everyone and don't give up after two follow-ups you can send up to five follow-ups so here's how to follow up properly use different channels so you'll have these leads you'll have them on instagram or facebook or linkedin but you can find them on all their other socials and then you can send them follow-ups there hey i sent you this over on facebook did you mind checking it out hey i sent you this over on thing email blah 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 you can also make a low commitment offer without being needy just be like hey look uh, I know you probably get messages like this all the time. I just want to send you this because I have a good offer for you and it's completely free and I don't want to sell you anything right now. So just take it. But don't 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 like tell them that 50 times. If they don't respond, save them for later. You can follow up again in like 30 days and maybe you'll catch them on a better day. The quick bump. This is a very simple example. Hey, name. No, you're probably busy building your XYZ and got sidetracked. Either that or you're thinking, maybe if I just ignore him, he'll go away. Bit of humor. But either way, just let me know if this is something you'd be open to hearing more about. If not, totally cool too. You just want to get the conversation started with this. The loom angle. Hey, Name, my last message was a bit of a long one, so I'll make this one short. I made a quick four-minute video for you explaining a few points that could help XYZ. It shouldn't be four minutes. I've written four minutes here, but it should actually be less than two minutes. So anytime you ever send a loom out, should be less than two minutes unless you're providing a lot of value i've sent 20 minute looms out before and gotten some of the biggest clients i generated someone over 200k and i sent them a 20 minute loom and they saw that i put the effort in with them and that ended up generating like massive revenue so no problem doing looms as long as you're actually providing value so let me know if this is something you think could work very very simple let me know the breakup email so Hey, Name, I've sent you a couple of emails so far regarding some ways we could grow XYZ, your company, but you haven't replied. This will be the final message you'll receive from me. However, if you'd like to at least hear the idea on how we could add more revenue to your bottom line, just send a quick reply to this email and I'll send over a concise three minute video explaining. If not, reply to this email with the word no and I won't follow up anymore. Best, your name. Part six, the sales call. So we're coming to the end of this section. This is very important though. The basic principles, do research before the call, relate and extrapolate, give them what they want, don't use salesy language, practice active listening, and don't be needy. So when you've actually got a client onto a sales call, which is the next thing that you're going to do after you've done your outreach, is you're going to get them on a sales call, this is important. So do research before the call. The last thing you want to do is turn up to a call without knowing anything about your prospect. This is just not going to work for you. Prospects want to work with those who display a solid understanding of their business and understand how to improve it. People are so valuable, like they're so protective of the time because it's so valuable. You'll win zero points by coming on unprepared. You'll just not get the client. It'll just be a waste of your time and their time. You're literally burning money if you don't prepare. Relate and extrapolate. extrapolate. One of the most important factors of a sales call is to make sure that the person feels hurt. So how do you make them feel hurt? By relating to them and extrapolating. People like relating to other people. Don't just ask a question and then follow up directly with another one. Ponder on their answer, relate to it and move on. Or give them a compliment. Just be like, oh yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, London's a wonderful city. Blah, blah. Relate. Funny. Say something funny. Give them what they want. 
If the prospect is not looking to improve a specific problem, that's what you cater for, nothing else. Don't go out there and, and pitch them on a new strategy that you've been exploring for the, new, for the past few months. Leave your ego out of the question and focus solely on the desires of your prospect. This is so important. Don't use salesy language. Don't try and explicitly persuade and use sales tactics. Keep things neutral and ask questions so that you can genuinely understand more about the prospect and provide solutions to their situation. Don't assume what's wrong with them and always stay within the frame of offering help. You have to provide value. Don't sell. If you provide actual value to a person, like to that person I generated 200k for, I provided so much value and didn't ask for anything in return with the Loom video I sent over that they just naturally were like, this guy is so helpful. What can he possibly do to help me that I could pay him for? And he ended up becoming a huge client. Practice active listening. Are you genuinely listening to what the prospect wants and is going through? Or are you simply waiting for them to finish their sentence so that you can fire off another question from your script? If it's the latter, the prospect will smell that from a mile away and close themselves off. Why? Because they're not being heard by you. Don't be needy. No one likes desperation or neediness. It's just the biggest repellent of people of all time. You should be coming from a place of abundance where you truly feel like you have a solution to their problems. And it's just, I just need to find some, someone to give this to. Not that you're just trying to sell a dog shit offer. Because you're selling a dog shit offer that you've, you don't think will actually help people. You won't be convinced of it yourself. And they certainly won't be convinced of it. Because if you're not convinced of what you're actually selling as an offer, then it's going to come across in your natural speaking ability. If they're not a good fit, don't worry. Learn from the experience and move forward to the rest of the opportunities out there. Now, objection handling. Ask questions that get them to convince themselves. So, is there anything you feel like you know you could be doing better right now? Or are you doing absolutely perfectly? Obviously, they're not doing perfectly. They want to make more money. They're not jeff bezos right now so there's something they're not doing right so pour like go actually go into the things that they might be doing wrong just ask them questions don't tell them what they're doing wrong ask them and have them tell you themselves agree with their objections and become curious and never argue with them jesus these are the worst if you ever argue with someone don't ex like you wouldn't believe some of the people that have become clients of ours and we've we've literally refunded them given their money back or people who've tried to sell us something and they argue with us and you're just like you don't get this at all so closing the deal let them know the next steps make it very very clear what they're what's going to happen next collect the cash asap here is a general rule if you get on a sales call you must close the person on that call they must send you the money on the call or it is not a close i've had to tell us to so many of my closers if you don't get the money on the call it is not a close They'll tell you, hey, yeah, I got to speak to someone, blah, blah, blah. I'll get you sent that over later today. Never comes in, bro. Until the money's in, it's not a close. Until the cash is in your bank, it's not a close. And you must do it on the call. Because otherwise, you'll just get giddy about money that's not coming. And number three, prepare for the actual work. Part seven, this is going to be a short one. And we're going to wrap it up here. Fulfillment. So this is actually you fulfilling the work. Now, you've already gone through the copywriting section. You'll get a lot more if you work with me and go through our six-figure freelancer program. But I'm going to give, give you some of the basics of fulfillment here. So why getting results for your clients is so important? Well, because you're going to get paid more. Like if you get them good results, they're going to continue to pay them. If you get them bad results, they're going to stop paying you. And then you have to find new clients again. It's a lot easier to keep a client that you've already got because you've already convinced them to work with you than it is to find a new one because you have to do all the selling and all the outreach again. So the best paid athletes are the best athletes. The people who do it week in, week out, they get paid and then they get a new contract and then they get paid again, they get paid more. They get offered to go to the Saudi League and get paid 100 million because they're the best athletes. They're actually good at what they do. You wanna get paid 10K a month, you're gonna to have to put the work in and be good at it. It's easier to sell a good product than a bad one because you'll be convinced of it, they'll be convinced of it. And then once you actually sell it to them, you can get repeat business. Your client results are your results. Getting high quality testimonials are great social proof to launch you to higher ticket deals. This is how you will succeed. This is how you'll go forward. So here are your next steps. Pick a niche, a prospecting method, and an outreach method. Start with as little as 10 outreaches a day, but make them super high quality. Share this video with others and like, the, like this. 
and sharpen your skills with my free copywriting course. So I've already gone through this, so go back over anything in the copywriting course that I've covered. And if you're interested in learning more, you can obviously work with us. We've got so much more to offer than what I've put in this course. This course is a couple of hours long. We have so much more and so much better content available uh, for paid clients. So I'm gonna leave this section here. If you find this valuable, leave a like, leave a comment with something that's maybe a question. I can clarify it in the comments or someone else can clarify it for you. Leave a funny comment down below. I've already told you to comment Pluto, so comment Jupiter if you've watched this far. And we'll move on to the next part of the video. Hey, what's up? Matthew here. Hopefully you enjoyed this course. I put a lot of effort into it and I honestly wanted to make it the best one on YouTube. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. If you've watched to this point, I really, really appreciate it. This took me like a full week of work to put together, uh, film, edit, all that sort of stuff. So. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you want to speak to me, work with us and join my six figure freelancer program, you can apply using the link in the description. It will send you to a page where you can enter your email address. I'll shoot you a quick video explaining how all of this works, how to speak to me and what my six figure freelancer program is, a little bit more about me. And then you can shoot directly onto my Instagram and speak to me there if you've watched the video. So that's gonna be it. I can send you that resource as well. It's gonna be included. The two niches that are working right now. So make sure to hit that link. Please hit subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a like and I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next one.